हाँ स्टार्ट कर दे सो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू योर फर्स्ट टेक्निकल सेशन ऑफ जादवपुर यूनिवर्सिटी मोटर स्पोर्ट्स क्लब लाइक यू हैड योर ओरिएंटेशन जस्ट लास्ट वीकेंड सो सिंस इट्स अ टेक्निकल क्लब यू विल हैव दिस सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन द वेरियस टेक्निकलिटीज ऑफ ऑटोमोबाइल्स बिफोर यू एक्चुअली लाइक वो वांट टू जॉइन द टेक्निकल टीम ऑफ आवर क्लब बिकॉज़ यू नीड टू नो सर्टेन एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ ऑटोमोबाइल्स टू टू लाइक प्रोसीड सो अच्छा एक बार एक टा बेसिक जीनी चीज़ है सोची थोड़ा माने फर्स्ट इयर्स बा ऑन ऑफ सेकंड इयर्स जाना आशीष व्हिच लैंग्वेज आज तो कंफर्टेबल इन मोस्ट कारण माने इंग्लिश इस कंफर्टेबल मंगोली कंफर्टेबल हिंदी कंफर्टेबल लाइक थोड़ा बोल माने कौन लैंग्वेज है नीले चुगी जाओ अनम्यूट करो या चैट बॉक्स से लिखे बोल माने कौन लैंग्वेज है प ये कौन सा लैंग्वेज हो ले ठीक आ चुके मौसमी तो नहीं ये कौन सा लैंग्वेज हो ठीक आ चुके बांग्ला बांग्ला बोल रहे हैं कहने सब आई क्यों आ चुके जो बांग्ला बोल रहे हैं हाँ एक जोन कमेंटेल लिखे चुके हैं अच्छा पेश को जोन लिख चुके इंग्लिश हिंदी कुत्ते हिंदी प्रो गो फॉर इंग्लिश इंग्लिश It will be a very basic session, like you can see components of a car is written. So what we'll do today, and today will be a comparatively much shorter session compared to what your next following sessions will be like. So uh, we'll go, we'll be going through the components of a car. We'll have a basic overview of uh, what a automobile or a vehicle like sort of looks like. Like I'll not go into much detail at all. Like. I'll along with Deepan, my uh, teammate, will be taking today's session, but uh, we won't go into much details today. We'll just keep it at a surface level and like go through the basics so that you get a like the purpose of today's session is to give you a sort of warmer before you go into the next session. Like after today's session, this much I can assure you that you sort will of, you have an idea of what an automobile, like various parts of an automobile, looks like, so that the next time you go to a car mechanic in a workshop, like he won't be able to fool you. This point, I can assure you, after today's session, but you won't be going into the depth of the engineering of what's behind all of that. So uh, keep it interactive, like ask questions, because obviously we'll get into more and more depth as we go along. So feel free to ask your doubts. Feel free to unmute and like chime in whenever you want to ask any doubt or write in the chat box. So uh, I'll take up your doubts as and when you. So yeah, let's get into today's session. अच्छा दीपन चैट बॉक्स तो देखिए हमसे बोले दीशा ना कौन-कौन चैट बॉक्स से देखते पाची ना जो टाइप कर के हाँ अच्छा एक जोन लिखे चे अतीप कृष्णा दास हैज आस्क्ड व्हाट इज पावर ट्रेन सो दीप्रो वुड यू लाइक टू गो ऑन दैट यस 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 वील कवर ऑल दैट व्हाट इज पावर ट्रेन एंड लाइक व्हाट आर द वेरियस कंपोन so just have a little bit of patience and we'll get into that like very shortly so and probably it's the second topic of our today's session so we'll get into it immediately so don't worry about that so uh, components of a vehicle so of course we have the engine uh, you know what the engine is like you have heard of the term engine that there's something called an engine inside an automobile or a motor bike like that's the power hub of the entire automobile you have heard that so I'm not going into much details of engine in this slide. We'll have engine in the next slide. So uh, and the next part is the transmission because you have heard that the engine produces a power, but how does the power reach the wheels of the vehicle or how does the vehicle actually move? There has to be a certain system in place so that the power that is produced from the engine it gets transmitted to the wheels so that it's able to move. So that's accomplished by this transmission system of the vehicle. Uh, now the drive train, like the drive train, is a part of the transmission unit of the vehicle. Uh, it's it's got a certain mechanism as to like it's it's a certain mechanism of how the power gets transmitted. We'll get in drive train. You'll understand a little later. Going into the depth of drive train, and uh, of course you know what wheels are. I don't need to explain why. Uh, the suspension system you'll get to know as you go along. The suspension is like when you go over bumps, like in very surface stops. If I try to explain, when you go over bumps or you go on a uh, rough terrain or an up and down road, 
you you experience if, if there's no suspension you like you like it will you'll vibrate and it's not a very pleasant experience like it acts as a shock absorber all sort of things so that's what the suspension does on, does on a surface level like it's precise engineering will get into depth later like people will take it and more will be done later brakes of course if you don't have the brakes you'll cause accidents you know what brake is uh, steering also i'm pretty sure you know like to give direction we need the steering and okay so this term many of you might not know maybe hearing for the first time the chassis so the chassis is sort of the skeleton of the whole vehicle like uh, it's it's the mount board on which the entire vehicle is structured like the suppose you get inside the car you sit on the car so what is this seat mounted on it needs a mount right like without the mount you cannot like sit on it and the mount also needs to be connected to the wheels so it sort of acts like a mount you understand what the word mount is like i don't i don't know if the pronunciation is coming correct but this is what i mean it's, it's, it acts like a mount for the entire vehicle the wheels and everything so that's what the chassis does it's a skeletal framework of the entire vehicle so uh, moving forward uh, somodipta covered this in the last day session like in the orientation session the components of car in relation to the human body it's a very fun analogy to sort of get get kick started with uh, learning about vehicles and automobiles so the head is usually uh, linked to the ecu or the engine control unit it's sort of the brain of the uh, vehicle you learn more about ecu as you go along uh, i'm not elaborating much detail over here the nose of the mouth is the air intake of the vehicle again you'll get to know about this later uh, the lungs are the air filter again uh, it's 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 a fun thing to about know all these what these analogies are the heart is the engine this is something that you will know know a bit about like this i'll be elaborating it in some time but it's a fun thing uh, the arteries and veins are the transmission the foot is the wheels you can relate to that the limbs are the steering because like the limbs are the steering you need to give direction with the limbs so in that regard the joints and the ligaments are the suspension like all the uh, coils and like connections on all those without them it won't like stand so it's very important the suspension and the skeleton like i said it's the chassis so uh, moving to the next slide so here we are gradually getting into the flow of power within an automobile so someone had asked uh, before the start of the session what the power train is so pay attention we'll, we'll we are gradually getting into what the power train is it starts from this slide so uh, this is more or less on your left the uh, flow of power inside the automobile so first there is the engine then it comes the, the engine then the flywheel then the transmission then the drive train then the wheel all right so uh, i'm pretty sure it got over the top of your head you you didn't get what i was trying to say over there but uh, let it build one by one first let's take the engine like what the engine actually is and this i put a small gif on your, on the right of your screen over here so this is what how the engine works and it's a very common engine it's uh, called a four stroke si engine it's called a four stroke SI engine. So, what's the full form of SI? Uh, SI stands for spark ignition. All right. I'll explain all this. Like, don't need to worry. SI is known as the spark ignition. Uh, so, just observe what happens in this image. So, this is sort of the meter that's going about. This one, two, three, four. These are the different phases, and these are the colored things that's written. Intake compression and all, all of those. So, what's happening is. this is the inlet valve all right this on your left this thing this is the inlet valve through this valve like and this is the chamber of the engine like this is the chamber of the engine all right so uh, okay one thing you must have heard a lot of you you have heard about uh, this bike has got 150 cc engine and got uh, 90 cc engine i'm sure you guys have heard about those uh, like if you have heard about those right in the chat box so uh, the engine capacity it's, it's called cubic capacity that cc stands for cubic capacity it measures the volume so how big this chamber is or what the volume of this chamber is it predicts the power delivered inside the engine so uh, this is where all that work takes place of moving the car ahead the power generation takes place over here so through the inlet valve the fuel the petrol or the diesel in this case it's petrol all right the si engine is always petrol driven all right i'm not going into diesel engine as yet so keep this in mind i'm going for petrol engine at the minute so uh, 
the petrol along is mixed with some amount of air all right like a one drop of uh, petrol is mixed with quite some amount of air and it is known as charge so i'm writing this over here this is the mixture petrol plus air it is called charge all right it's a, it's a term used so this charge is pumped in through this inlet valve this inlet valve the charge is pumped in this green that you have seen it pours in this is the inflow cycle now after it's like the charge has come into the system the piston will go down once the charge has come in the piston will go down so first is the intake all right the piston, during the intake the piston will go down then the piston comes up all right the, why the piston comes up because it's in inertia so like because of the inertia the piston will come up automatically once it's like pushed down so because the piston comes up and the charge is already present over here it compresses the charge all right like the charge it's, it's put under very high pressure as soon as the uh, piston comes up now when the piston comes up it's a, so you have you have read you have uh, read physics and chemistry both in class 11 and 12 so uh, in thermodynamics it's a closed system like the volume of the system it is getting reduced all right so the pressure of the system as well as the temperature of the system inside this chamber is going up like i hope that you guys can read you have read this in uh, thermodynamics in class 11 chemistry as well as in class 12 uh, physics so uh, the pressure and the temperature goes up and this spark plug is initiated as soon as it's pushed upward so this like it gives a spark so this entire fuel air mixture it catches fire primarily the fuel catches fire but in that high pressure that is good enough to like produce that power so that's called the power cycle it's, it's it's in the combustion so that's the combustion pump now once the combustion is produced it produces an enormous amount of power and the gases like they expand because of course it's it's burned the fuel is burned and a lot of gases are produced and so that entire combustion then create even more pressure so the piston is again forced to come down all right if you guys have any doubt in what i'm saying like put it in the chat box you can redirect it to me so uh, once this pressure is there it like the piston again comes down and the last stage the exhaust phase the residual gases are ejected through this exhaust valve this is the exhaust valve on the right all right so inlet compression then after that then combustion and then exhaust so uh, do you guys have any doubt in this engine process like feel free to, to write in the chat box and before it to back to the next two one acha adip krishna das is asking if i have two engine each of 50 cc will the total cc be 100 or 50 uh, no it will be uh, two engines of 50 cc because uh, okay so one thing like you can see the diagram downwards engines are always like not one cylinder is used multiple engines work together all right uh, the reason for this is suppose at like i'm explaining the reason why multiple engines are used never it's never that one engine is used minimum two engines are used at a time here in this diagram four engines are used at a time in this diagram you can see but minimum two are used at a time because when power when the power stroke of this engine like in the combustion phase it produces power but in the other phases it does not produce as power so it lacks power in that phase so uh, at that point when it is not producing power like this particular engine is not producing power the other engine the, the other engine that exists that needs to support the power during that phase so usually it's always two engines operating together like if one does not produce power at that particular instant the other produces power at that instant then again when the other does not produce power the other one produces power so they go in synchronization like uh, to produce power in because the, because the vehicle needs power at all instant like you can't ask the vehicle to not take power for uh, a couple of seconds it, it, it doesn't work like that the automobile requires power all the time so the so there's always two such uh, pistons uh, piston cylinders working in, uh, in in a pair so to 
I hope I am able to answer that doubt. Like any. See, basically, uh, uh, everyone who is having this doubt, like uh, Atib has asked. So Deepro meant to say that there are multiple cylinders, and the whole assembly constitutes engine. so it is never like there are one or two like uh, what you are asking is ki 100 cc or 50 cc each cylinder is of 50 cc and those each 50 cylinder is constituting the engine okay so you say it like this the terminology goes on like this that so this is an engine uh, it, the different engines provide continuous power so that if one, at any instance one does not work so other other will provide the support to generate the power is it right That's the, yes. What I yes. 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 Because also you also another purpose is you need a lot more power. So backup plus a lot more generation. So these are the two purposes. Backup plus synchronization, like uh, one stop producing power, the other will produce power. Yeah. So. So any doubt? Okay. Okay, Deepro. Okay. There is a doubt from the students that is, is there any sort of thermodynamic cycle going on in the cylinder in the chamber from where uh, we, we are deriving deriving the rotational work? Yes, of course, of course, there is thermodynamics going on. Like uh, th there will be a dedicated session on this. There's there's a dedicated session called thermodynamics of IC engine. Like you'll have that session like moving forward. Uh, so what what's happening in the engine is like uh, the Pressure is getting immense. The temperature is also increasing, and uh, therefore the work is being produced. Like thermodynamic work is being converted into like mechanical work inside the engine. You are right in that respect. But exactly how is that happening? We'll get into details later. I don't want to get into the details right now. But yes, there is like uh, thermodynamic work done, which is getting converted into mechanical work done inside the engine. So you are right in that regard. Anyone else? Any you, doubts? You know to ask. I actually wanted to know about the spark ignition, which you have mentioned earlier. Could you explain what is spark ignition? Okay, so uh, you you have uh, understood this uh, combustion phase. What's your name? Ah, uh, Shagni. Okay, Shagni. So, uh, have you understood what the combustion phase is? Like, what happens during the combustion? Ah, uh, more or less, yes, more or less. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so during the in petrol engines, you need a spark plug like this particular uh, thing that you can see that it's uh, like in this previous circle it lit up a bit. Like just observe this. You can see the flame like this blue flame appearing. So this is called a spark plug. This particular thing, all right, like this thing. So in petrol engines, it's not there in diesel engines. All, all right. So that's why I didn't say about diesel engines. Diesel engines are called CI engines. CI engines, all right. That is compression ignition, and SI is called spark ignition. So what it implies that the how does the combustion occur in the inside the engines? Does the combustion occur due to the presence of a spark, or does the combustion occur due to just the combustion uh, compression? So uh, the diesel engine is called the compression ignition. There's no like. Uh, There's no spark plug inside a diesel engine, uh, but there's uh, a spark plug inside the petrol engine. So the petrol engine is called a spark ignition, the SI engine, and the diesel engine is called a CI engine. So that's the spark ignition thing that I said. So. anything is else? is there any is there any doubt regarding the steps that uh, deepro has explained any of you guys totally feel free to ask there is no need of sh being shy away or anything like that yeah we are we are just uh, your immediate seniors like we are yeah, also yeah. learning with you like we are yes, not, we are, we are also not professors we are not we are no experts on this subject like last year our seniors taught us this like so we are just passing on the knowledge to you guys yes yes so it's like a next year, chain process yeah. Yes, next year you you guys will passing this. You will be passing this on to your team. So feel free to ask whatever doubts you might. Whatever, have. however it is, or what kind of it is regarding all this process, just feel free. Make we want to make this session interactive, so we need your cooperation also. So just feel free. Don't worry. Thank okay. you. If you want to ask, for a given combustion, which is sparked, which is that, which is that, for which is that, what is combustion? बोल से हाँ 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 वो टाइप कॉम्बोशन होती है
আচ্ছা তার জন্য কি হচ্ছে মানে নিচেতে নেমে যাচ্ছে ওর জন্য মানে পুরো জিনিসটা কম্বাশনটা করে দেওয়ার পর কম্বাশনটা করে দেওয়ার পরে তো যখন গ্যাসেস হয় না পুরে গেলে তো গ্যাসেস আসবে ঠিক ঠিক তো কার্বন তো কমতে পেট তাই না পেট্রোল বা ডিজেল তো কার্বন যখনই ওই কম্বাশন হবে ওই এয়ার এর সাথে মিক্সচার করে চার্জ যেটা বললাম তো চার্জে অক্সিজেন প্রেজেন্ট আছে তো ওটা ইমিডিয়েটলি তো গ্যাসেস মানে কার্বন ডাই অক্সাইড কার্বন মনোক্সাইড বিভিন্ন রেশিওতে গ্যাসেস ফর্ম করবে তো ওই গ্যাসেস যে করবে ওটা তো এক্সপ্যান্ড করে যাবে লিকুইড থেকে গ্যাসিয়াসে যে চলে যাবে তো ওটা ভলিউম বেড়ে যাওয়ার জন্য অবভিয়াসলি ওর মানে প্রেসার ও বেশি ইয়ে করার চেষ্টা করবে তো ওই প্রেসারের জন্যই তো পিস্টনটা নিচে নেমে যাবে মানে ধাক্কা দিয়ে নিচে নামবে ঠিক 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 বল বুঝতে পারছি যাদের একটু বাংলাতে যদি বোঝার ইয়ে হয় বা হিন্দিতেও বলে দেবো অসুবিধা নেই তো मतलब लिखा था पेट्रोल प्लस एयर का वो मिक्सचर को चार्ज बोलते तो उस चार्ज के घुसाने के वजह से इनिशियली तो ये मतलब चेम्बर कोलैप्स था ना क्योंकि कुछ नहीं था चेम्बर के अंदर तो तुम जब भी चार्ज घुसाएगा तो ये पिस्टन को धक्का देके नीचे उतारेगा कि भाई तुम नीचे जाओ ये जो पिस्टन है उसको नीचे धकेलेगा अब ये पिस्टन जब नीचे जाएगा तो ऑटोमेटिकली वो एक इनर्शिया में आ गया है ये सोच के देखो कि तुम एक चीज को कभी भी वो धकेल दिया तो वो वापस से चाहेगा कि अपना ओरिजिनल पोजिशन पे आए मतलब वो टू एंड फ्रो करता रहेगा ये जो चीज तुम देख रहे हो तो जब भी तुम उसको नीचे धक्का दोगे उसका टेंडेंसी होगा कि मैं ऊपर आऊ वापस से तो वो ऊपर आएगा जब ऊपर आएगा तो कंप्रेस करेगा ठीक है और भी फैक्टर्स है कि ऊपर आता है वो बाद में डिस्कस कर लेंगे कभी लेकिन मोटा मोटी यही है कि वो ऊपर आता है मतलब वो नीचे धकेले जाने के बाद जब ऊपर आएगा तब कंप्रेस करेगा जैसे ही कंप्रेस करेगा तो वो जो स्पार्क प्लग है ऊपर वाला वो स्पार्क प्लग को ट्रिगर कर देगा कि भाई देखो मैं कंप्रेस कर रहा हूँ मैं चाप रहा हूँ तुमको तो ये ट्रिगर हो जाता है वो उसमें तो प्रेशर के वजह से भी टेम्परेचर ऊपर जाता है और स्पार्क प्लग तो अपना वो चिंगारी देता भी है कि ये लोग जल जाए मतलब उस टाइप से तो इसीलिए वो पेट्रोल जो रहता है वो एक बूंद पेट्रोल चाहिए होता है मतलब वो बहुत सारा हवा के साथ तो वो बहुत सारा हवा में तो ऑक्सीजन प्रेजेंट है तो उसमें वो जल जाता है तो जैसे ही जल गया वो ट्रेमेंडस अमाउंट ऑफ हीट और वो सब जनरेट कर पाता है मतलब पर प्रेशर तो जनरेट करता ही है क्योंकि जब भी तुम वो लिक्विड को वो गैसेस बनते बनने फॉर्म हो जाएंगे वो कार्बन कंपाउंड जल के कार्बन मोनोक्साइड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड वो सब फॉर्म कर लेगा तभी वो गैसेस एक्सपैंड करेगा उसका वॉल्यूम तो बढ़ेगा क्योंकि वो लिक्विड फेस से गैसेस में कन्वर्ट हो रहा है तो वो वो और पिस्टन को धोके लेगा नीचे जाएगा और ये पिस्टन के चलने के वजह से ही पावर जनरेट होता है तो समझ रहे हो मतलब ये ये जो पूरा प्रोसेस है ये पिस्टन को अप डाउन करवाने के मेरा मकसद है ताकि ये पिस्टन अप डाउन हो ये पिस्टन अगर अप डाउन होता रहे तो ये पिस्टन कनेक्टिंग रॉड के साथ देखो ये क्रैंक शाफ्ट बोल के चीज है यहाँ पे बेहतर समझ में आएगा ये ये जो है ये पूरा क्रैंक शाफ्ट है ये जो मैं नीचे का इमेज में जो तो लाल पेन से ये कर रहा हूँ तो ये पिस्टन जैसे अप डाउन होता रहेगा ये क्रैंक शाफ्ट को रोटेट करता रहेगा क्योंकि देखो ये पिस्टन का क्या है ये तो ट्रांसलेट कर रहा है ऊपर नीचे टू एंड फ्रो कर रहा है उसका ये जो कनेक्टिंग रॉड है ये कनेक्टिंग रॉड रेसिप्रोकेटिंग मोशन कर रहा है मतलब बोथ रोटरी एज वेल एज ट्रांसलेशन और उसका नीचे जो ये क्रांक शाफ्ट है ये जो ये जो घूम रहा है देखो ये पूरा रोटेट कर रहा है इसका ये प्योर रोटेटरी है और ये प्योर ट्रांसलेटरी है पिस्टन और ये तो ये कनेक्टिंग रॉड से इसको क्रैंक शैफ्ट को घुमा रहा है तो क्रैंक शैफ्ट जैसे ही घूमेगा उसी से वो मतलब रोटेटिंग वो आ जाता है वो पावर इज इक्वल टू टाव नॉट ओमेगा ये फॉर्मूला पड़े होगे तुम लोग फिजिक्स में ये मतलब पावर का ये तो पड़े ही होगे एफ डॉट बी तो पड़े ही होगे फोर्स इन टू वेलोसिटी तो टाव डॉट ओमेगा भी एक फॉर्म होता है मतलब पावर जनरेशन का फिजिक्स में पढ़ रहे होंगे पावर इज इक्वल टू टाउ डॉट होगा तो उसी से ये टॉर्क जनरेट हो जाता है मतलब टॉर्क और ओमेगा दोनों तो उससे पावर जनरेशन होता है तो इसी से मतलब मोटा मोटी इंजिन में कैसे पावर जनरेट हुआ उसका एक्सप्लेनेशन ये है 
तो बेसिकली लेट द लेट द डिटेल्स बी स्पेयर्ड फॉर द लेटर सेशन बिकॉज that's the basic detail you need to understand is how the process is happening don't worry about the technical terms so if dipro has used some technical terms do not worry about that we will cover all those technical terms aram sir aaj ka bilkul basic session hai ekdam basic session hai aaj ekdam matlab chill karke dekho ki ekta question ache seta hote je amra normally dekhi je je glo petrol engine hoy she glo higher rpm e jete pare kintu diesel engine je glo hoy she glo rpm ta petrol er tulonay kom hoy पेट्रोल पेट्रोल अच्छा <laughs> 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 डीजल प्लस है All right, it becomes diesel plus hai. in the uh, compression ignition engine. It becomes the charge becomes diesel plus. Hai. So the uh, diesel plus has it, 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 hold, hold on. Ne, I will explain this. Okay, okay. Ne, he need to change that. In CI engine, ne, we will use ne, only air, not ne, diesel plus air, ne, and diesel will supply ne, through the nozzle. And, no, and where we ne, put the nozzle? Nozzle will replace the spark plug in the same position. Am I audible? Yes, 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 yes. In in the first stroke, in the intake stroke, ne, the air ne come into the chamber. Second in second stroke compression, the heat of the chamber will be increased. In that time, the ne. Combustion happened, and mm, the diesel will comes mm, through the nozzle. Why through the nozzle? Because mm, the uh, diesel को gaseous state में ले जाने के लिए nozzle के जो छोटे-छोटे mm, mm, hole होते हैं, उससे निकाला जाता है क्योंकि उससे वो compressed air के साथ mm, अच्छे से घुल सके और air already compressed होने के वजह से बहुत ज्यादा टेम्परेचर में होता है और यहीं पे कंबशन होता है जहां पे जो कंबशन वाला ब्लास्ट जिसके लिए पावर मिलता है पावर स्ट्रोक 
and then the exhaust strokes. Am I clear? Any doubts, guys? What is the nozzle? Like the Jigasha got say, what is nozzle? Achha, nozzle to a joke or all data in the same place. Jekhane uh, spark plug, chilo. where the spark plug was there in case of CI engine, there is that nozzle in place of that spark plug. The nozzle to the velocity tag body there. Uh, nozzle, uh, the main purpose of nozzle is to produce droplets, na? the fluid droplets. We need droplets of diesel, okay? And we are intaking the air in case of petrol engine. So, to the fluid aspect of the equation of continuity in A1, V1 is equal to A2, V2, what is the concept of the Definitely, it increases the velocity. If you are saying the velocity bar, that the velocity of the fluid definitely increases, but uh, the it fluid is split. It doesn't matter. Karana. This is split into droplets, small droplets. We need those droplets. See, let me give of, a very good example. Wait, uh, Deepan. Wait. Yes, yes. Let me give a very good example. For example, um, you have a jet spray, okay? And in a compressed chamber, where the uh, means temperature is very high. When you do the compression process, what happened? Hello. The temperature increases. So if in a high cut, uh, pressure area, if you are injecting some fuel, so and uh, if you consider this fuel, which is diesel in this case, so what happens? It will burn because the burn, uh, burning pressure is very low in that case, right? So it will burn out. So eventually, we are, what we'll see, that uh, uh, someone is asking for admit weight. Uh, so what we will see that the nozzle is yes. ultimately. Uh, can you mute yourself or you want to say something? To Kalyan. Okay. Uh, so what we see that the purpose of the nozzle is to inject the fuel. That's all. Okay, and it is a pressure chamber. Here you can see when the piston is in compression from what happens, the air get compressed and also the temperature increases. So when we inject the fuel in that place, what happens? It get ignited and we see the bombardness. So the combustion will take place and uh, then the piston will move downward and we can see this particular um, flywheel will rotate and we get the thrust and uh, obviously we move. The um, shaft uh, rotates and uh, exactly. So, uh, among there is an instrument called diesel injector. It sprays diesel into the chamber. Oh no, it is called an injecting spray or fuel injector, right? So it contains fuel. Um, if uh, you all are comfortable in Hindi, I'll talk in Hindi also. So you have. For example, petrol in this case, right? In um, combustion engines, you have fuel. What you do? You use spark plug. Ab hum koi, hum isme Q injector use nahi kar rahe. The first question, we are not using the injector because the uh, temperature or uh, we can say the volatility of uh, petrol cannot be achieved by that pressure, by that temperature. So for that, we need some uh, thing that can ignite. Yes, exactly. You are correct. Diesel has a lower ignition temperature. So as diesel is having a lower ignition temperature, it will burn out whenever we uh, give a little bit of pressure. And we know that the pressure inside the engine is very high, right? So the temperature is also increasing and hence uh, as the diesel is having a low ignition temperature, it burns out. But in case of petrol, it doesn't burn because its ignition temperature is high. So to to um, create this process, we need some kind of ignition. So we use a spark plug, which uh, which is connected to a battery. All these things we will learn in a greater detail in the future sessions, right? So uh, whenever this ignition will take place, it will burn the air fuel mixture and then it will um, burn the engine in subsequent manner as already described by the probe. And finally, you can uh, ultimately get that uh, how it is totally working. So if you have any more doubt, you just can ask again. Yeah, yeah. Please read the word. I hope it is cleared. 
if anyone has any doubt you just unmute yourself and can ask yeah. dada ekta doubt likheche je as we shift from first to higher gears does the frequency of droplets in the chamber increases for more power oh no see uh, gear shifting is a different case for that thing you, it uh, totally depends on many factors so in this class as it is an introductory class let's focus on the basic things because if we go upon technicalities of everything then uh, there will be no agenda of learning right because if we are not yes, clear yes. with our basics we cannot get into the tougher part so i'll recommend everyone to go through this lecture whatever dipro and uh, dipan is teaching and uh, make the question necessary questions are okay like you have asked question from sci engine yes that we can obviously answer for now because it this is within our range but if you ask question from the gear shifting and all for that you need different technicalities because you have to know that how does a gear works and uh, you are talking about the frequency of drop, droplet so before that you need to know the how the sy synchronization of uh, uh, the injectors are taken place in the engine so there are various things that will keep in mind during that process so we'll yes, answer exactly. this question I guess, during that sessions so yes, yes i guess for time questions. being you can keep the doubts with yourself and like there will be several sessions for like ic engines etc okay so no need to yes, worry yes. okay yes for ic yes. engine you will got a uh, very good lecture series along with you will have a good lecture series with the gears transmission power so you can easily understand there today's agenda is to just go through the subject that what are the things you will being uh, we we will be teaching you all in future so these are the basic course curriculum that you can see on this basis only you will get selected to this club so dipro you may continue yes yes thank you rahul so yes, yes. Um, yes. so uh, like that was the basic part of the engine like and in this uh, bottom diagram like i explained before the to and fro um, movement of the pistons if you convert it into the uh, rotation of the crank and it will produce uh, like torque will produce and this is how the power is generated this tau omega thing so that's how the engine working is done so i'll move on to the next slide so because i've given a more or less basic idea of what how the engine operates so uh, now moving on to the transmission system so uh, like what's the function of the tra transmission system like you can read it out it is used to transmit engine torque to the driving wheels to drive the vehicle so uh, the torque that is produced inside the engine that needs to be like transmitted to all these wheels right is how will the vehicle move like we need to transmit it to the wheels for the vehicle to move forward so this is accomplished through the entire transmission system the transmission system is in this particular image that you can see like a small schematic of the entire transmission system so uh, coming now this is the engine the torque is being produced so okay so one thing which i like to mention over here when the vehicle is starting like when it's at zero speed you need a lot more torque to get it to 0.001 meter per second speed all right you need comparatively much lesser torque to get it up get it up from 0.001 meter per second to say 5 meter per second so the because in the first case you are changing the energy of the vehicle you are changing it from rest to motion from 0 to 0.001 meter per second so in that case you need a lot of torque torque is an equivalent of force you need like a lot of force in that case so uh, when you are starting the vehicle you need a lot of torque and this is accomplished like uh, by shifting gears and all of that now the clutch the function of the clutch in this case it's placed just after the engine it is used to disengage the engine from the rest of the transmission system it is used to disengage like uh, it's written over here clutch is used to disengage and engage the engine with the rest of the transmission system so uh, it cuts the power supply at certain points and it again like uh, allows the power to flow through at certain points so that's the function of the clutch uh, to disengage while starting the engine and while changing the gear ratio now what the gear ratio is and what the gear systems are you will get to know as you move along like rahul said so uh, the, so the clutch is more or less like a somewhat protective and somewhat uh, utility uh, mechanism as well it cuts off the power supply from the engine to the rest of the transmission 
so uh, so like and after engine when it gets into the transmission it moves through the drive shaft like the power it moves through the drive shaft and then the differential it sort of distributes it to the okay so this is the rwd it's a rear wheel drive that shows the engine is uh, in the front of the vehicle what is rwd will uh, go in probably the next slide only so the engine is in the front of the vehicle like you have seen that in most cars uh, like in taxi or whichever car the, the uh, driver when the car is not functioning properly he goes to the front of the car he opens the uh, bonnet in that uh, vehicle and he repairs the engine the engine is placed in the front of the vehicle the, from the front of the vehicle the power is transmitted to the left and right rear wheels so this is the entire like through the drive shaft through the differential through the axles it goes to the wheel so the entire transmission in detail you will get to know later but uh, this is more or less the road map of how the uh, power transmission flows through the vehicle so um, and uh, okay so another thing that i probably would like to mention over here is the flywheel so in just a small like instance what the flywheel does is that it stores up energy like when the vehicle begins it stores up energy and it releases energy as and when required so the fluctuation in the torque produced is reduced now how you may ask how the fluctuation in torque is produced the fluctuation in torque is produced like uh, when the engine, the engine produces power only in the power stroke or the combustion stroke like you saw in the previous slide in the other strokes it does not produce power but the vehicle has the demand of power in all those other cycles as well like you can't ask the vehicle to not take like adjust as per the needs of the engine like when the engine is uh, producing power in that stroke only in that stroke to take power the other strokes like you just it idly it doesn't happen like that so uh, what the flywheel does is it uh, okay and another thing during the power stroke the engine produces a lot more power than what is required in the vehicle at that particular point so the what the flywheel does is it stores up that excess power generated in the power stroke during that time and as and when the power stroke like it passes away and the intake phase and the compression phase and all those comes in and the exhaust phase comes in it like releases that power to the vehicle during those particular cycles so that's the basic function of the flywheel exact mechanisms again later like uh, i know that we are going and we are skipping a few parts because this is a pure introductory session if we go into a lot of depth like you guys will be bored out of your head so uh, like just like get sticking to the basic surface level things like what is this what is that like just getting into the basics uh, will get into depth as you move along so moving on to the main uh, next slide so this is also the function of the transmission system just you can go through this we'll share the pdf at the end of the session to transmit power from engine to the wheels of the automobile to facilitate variable rpm so uh, so variable and R, variable rpm and torques okay this part i'm touching a bit so power is equal to tau dot omega so when the vehicle is starting you need a lot more torque like i said because uh, you you are changing the inertia of the vehicle so a lot more torque is required so uh, a lot a lot of torque is required but it does not necessarily mean that you require a huge amount of omega you know, omega is the speed of rotation of the wheels like its angular uh, velocity so the rpm so if when you are imparting 0.001 meter per second speed obviously the omega is pretty low right but the torque has to be extremely large and another thing the power generation is more or less made constant from the engine like uh, the flywheel and the engine they more or less uh, operate in synchronization and make the power constant you can assume the power to be constant when uh, discussing all this variable rpm and omega like for the sake of simplicity so uh, the torque thing it it is high when the vehicle is starting but when you want to get into higher speeds like suppose you have got into 0.01 meter per second but of obviously if you are driving from kolkata to delhi with 0.001 meter per second like you will uh, get old by the time you will reach delhi from kolkata so you need to like ramp up the speed of the vehicle uh, with higher omega you need to get to uh, 70 km per hour then you need to get to 110 km per hour so these things needs to happen so in that case the omega increases the omega shoots up but the torque has to come down in that 
phase because the power is constant, right? Like the engine can't go on producing uh, more torque when the omega is also high. So the power is constant, the torque comes down at that phase. So uh, this was the basic thing uh, to facilitate variable RPM because RPM is variable. Like at low speeds, you've got low RPM. At higher speeds, you've got RPM, higher RPM. So RPM is nothing but omega, all right? Uh, revolutions per minute, that's the unit. And uh, talks to the wheels of the automobile. And third point, to alter the ratio of wheel speed and engine speed in order to suit uh, field condition. So that's pretty evident. Uh, the fourth point to transmit power through the right angle drive because the crankshaft and the rear axle are normally at right angles to each other. Okay, so uh, the crankshaft, crankshaft, what the crankshaft is, uh, I've explained that it's the basic rod which connects the entire, it's connected to all the cylinders at the same time and it rotates and uh, uh, it transmits the power to the drive shaft which then goes into the axles because uh, the axles are, uh, the drive shaft and the axles are at right angles to each other like this is what it's trying to say look this is 90 degree each other like it's not exactly the crankshaft it's a drive shaft but uh, uh, the crankshaft comes from this phase and it connects to the drive shaft so more or less uh, this is what it's trying to say so uh, okay so before moving on to the drive train uh, again any doubts up until this point anyone uh, in the chat or unmute yourself uh, actually, well, uh, hello, uh, uh, actually, your voice is not at all audible. To you. Uh, actually, in uh, automated uh, cars, the, there is no clutch. So, how is that disengage and engage of the in engine takes place? No, in automated vehicles, in uh, which what is the automated part of the vehicle? Like automation, mm -hmm. like it's a very generic term. Like, what's the automated part? The new cars which don't have that gear clutch system. It's like you don't need gear change and nothing is there. Just yes. So the, the no the clutch is present in those vehicles also. The clutch is the automated part in those vehicles. All right. So uh, the, those again you are getting into the details of clutch. Like you'll have a specific session on clutch again. Uh, there are different kinds of clutch. There's manual clutch, automated clutch. Like uh, there are different kinds of clutch. All right, you will study that as well. So in the modern automated uh, cars, where you're saying that there's no, like there's no clutch, you don't have to control the clutch. But that doesn't mean that there's no clutch in the vehicle. There's clutch in the vehicle, but it's automated. All right. So. Okay. Anyone? Anything else? You can unmute yourself and ask, or you can write in the chat box. So I think, uh, Deepro, you can proceed. Okay, so there's no doubt I'll proceed. So uh, coming to the drivetrain mechanism, so what the drivetrain mechanism is, like you can see it is the group of components of a motor vehicle that deliver power to the driving wheels. So uh, again, it's sort of a schematic of how the power is like transmitted from the engine to the wheels. All right. So um, it's sort of a schematic, like the engine is, if, uh, if, if I come to the rear wheel drive first, I wrote RWD in the previous page. So just coming to the rear wheel drive, I'll try to explain what the drive train is to the rear wheel drive, and then I'll ex extrapolate it to both the front wheel, uh, four wheel and all wheel. So uh, what the RWD or the rear wheel drive means, that the power from the engine is delivered to the rear wheels and the rear wheels push the car forward, all right? So what it means is, the uh, where's the rear, yes, so, so the engine is in the front of the vehicle, inside the bonnet, the engine is there. The engine does not transmit any power to the front wheels, all right? There's no power transmission to the front wheels. The power goes directly to the rear wheels, the left rear wheel and the right rear wheel. The rear wheels move forward and because the rear wheel moves forward, the front wheel also moves forward. So that's the basic system. So uh, it's not that the engine supplies the power directly to the front wheels. The front wheel just moves because the rear wheel moves. So that's what the rear wheel drive is. Now, uh, coming to the front wheel drive, it's obviously it's just the opposite. Uh, so the engine is in the front of the vehicle. 
and the power is produced to the uh, front wheels. It's not produced to the back wheels. So the back wheels move because of the front wheels in case of the front wheel drive. The power is coming to the front wheels and it moves because of the back wheels. Uh, the back wheels move because of the front wheel. So that's the front wheel drive, uh, basically. So you might ask, uh, where, where do front wheel drives get used? Front wheel drives are used generally in, uh, in mountainous areas or in probably rougher terrains where you have to like, it's, it's very like uneven road and all those sort of things. You need more power in the front wheels than in the back wheels. On plain roads, the rear wheel drive works very fine. It's a very, a rear wheel drive is very common. So uh, like rear wheel drive works fine, but the front wheel is usually in rugged, mountainous, rough terrains uh, in those places. Now, the four-wheel drive is also used in such mountainous terrains where uh, power from the engine is delivered to all the four wheels all the time. That is, four cross four is engaged. Like the engine delivers power both to the front and back wheels as well as the uh, go to the front front wheels as well as the back wheels. So that's uh, the four-wheel drive. Uh, it, it can be disengaged, uh, is engaged and has an option to operate in RWD format. So it can operate in the rear wheel drive format at times to conserve fuel, like there's the uh, option to operate operate this in the rear wheel drive format. So that's the four wheel drive and the all wheel drive. Okay, so uh, one thing which I'll clarify at this point, the all wheel drive and the four wheel drive, it might appear very similar to a lot of you. The exact difference you won't understand in this particular session. I've been very clear with you. You'll understand the precise difference between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive as you move forward. Like, I, I'll try to give you an idea of what the difference is, but uh, again, you have, you don't know what a differential is in the car. So, uh, it, 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 it won't be possible for you to, like, grasp it very properly. But if someone even knows differential, uh, like, I'll recommend that we'll cover it in the later sessions. So, the, what the all-wheel drive is, a drivetrain that employs a front, rear and center differential to provide power to all four wheels of a vehicle. So, that's the all-wheel drive. Okay, I'll give us a brief idea of what the differential is. I won't go into a lot of depth of what differential is. Uh, wait, I probably had an image of the differential. Yes, yes. So, here's the image of the differential. So, uh, the car is like, it's, it's, it's a broad thing, right? The car, like, it's not a very thin object. It's got some width to it, right? Let's say uh, W, maybe it's, it's in meters, but let's consider W centimeter is the width. Like, it's not negligible. So, when you're turning around corners, you can understand that the uh, movement of the left wheel uh, and the right wheel, which is the inside wheel and the outside wheels will not be same because suppose there's a turn like this, I'm trying to draw a very bad road, but uh, anyway, so suppose the, this car is moving onto this particular road, the, out, the inner wheels have to, like they have to turn a much like a smaller distance compared to the outside wheels because uh, if, if the center is, this is R1 and this is R2. So, uh, the theta is same in this case, but uh, it is R1 theta and R2 theta. So, I hope I'm being able to give you an idea that uh, the right wheel uh, or the outer wheel will cover a more distance than the inner wheel. So, this power differentiation, because if the power differentiation is not done, and, and the bland power is supplied from the engine directly to the wheels, there's no differentiation. So the right wheel will also turn as much as the left wheel will turn. And the point is you won't be able, able to turn at all. You'll just go straight up and like cause accident. So to be able to turn, you need the differential. Like it, it differentially supplies power to the inner wheel and the outer wheel. So that's the basic function of the differential. If I'm able to explain it in very layman terms, like it's a, you, you learn about its details in much later session. So, uh, the, so whenever power is supplied in case of RWD, FWD, there's always a differential. All right, there's always a differential in these cases. Like to supply power, you need to have a differential. So in rear wheel drive, the differential is located at the back of the vehicle. In front wheel drive, the uh, differential is located at the front of the vehicle. In four wheel drive, the differential is located both at the front as well as in the back. 
and in the all wheel drive it is located front back and center so this is what the all wheel drive the difference between all wheel drive and four wheel drive is if you have got any confusion again i told you you will have a dedicated session on what these things are you will get to know it in details so that's the basic like what the drive train thing is so okay so next we'll have wheels uh, before moving on to this any doubt again um, if anyone has feel free to ask any doubts in the chat or maybe on mute yourself yeah your voice is very inaudible i can't make out what you're saying is glitching uh, very much you can write in the chat box uh, if you want to okay anyone else anything because that ends more or less the basic introduction of uh, the the power transmission so that's how the power transmission inside the automobile works like so any doubt anyone then we can like elaborate that else we will move forward to wheels Any doubt? Keep on anything in the chat box. Uh, no, nothing new. Uh... Okay, okay. Then I'm I'm moving forward to wheels. So uh, wheels, like most of you know what the wheels is. Wheels are so uh, basic diagram which we have drawn all through childhood. This is the wheel. This is the tire. So <laughs> it's a basic thing that I used to draw in my drawing books when I was young. So uh, you must know, uh, you, you've seen also what the wheel is and like what the tire is. Now coming to the wheels, uh, people who are from metallurgy and who are from uh, mechanical, like uh, the two of you, I think, will study uh, your course on uh, material science and engineering, MSc, the material science subject. So there you'll uh, like study like which materials to select for making wheels. Generally, the standard wheels are made of steel. Uh, some wheels are also fitted with alloy wheels that are made of magnesium or aluminium. So these are the materials which is used in making the wheels. But uh, the material selection you will again get to learn in more depth in your uh, semesters and as well as in our future sessions. So um, the rim, this holds the tire. So this is the rim that you can see on the on the wheel. I hope the diagram. Is visible to you guys. Uh, the you, you you guys can make out from the diagram, right? Like what the where the rim is. Like this is the rim, and it like it holds the tire in place. So the tire is fit, fitted over this particular rim. So that's what the uh, that's how the uh, tire is held in place. As the tire will just fall out when the like is going on. So. Uh, well of the wheel allows the tire to be removed and refitted center section is welded to the rim so the the wheel disc this is the wheel disc okay one question you might ask why are there these holes and all these things in the wheels this will uh, like people in mechanical will get to study as they go on and study machine design like this is there there's there are, there's a concept called balancing which will learn why why there are holes in these places uh, but uh, like this is the wheel disc, it's uh, like welded to the rim. So it, this wheel disc is welded to the rim and the rim holds the tire. So uh, that's what the basic thing engineering about wheel is like. And of course the basic you know why the why we need a wheel, why the, the wheels cannot be square and it needs to be round, these things you know. Like I don't have to elaborate on these things, basic class 12 level physics, these concepts. So this will be pretty easy for you guys. So. Um, and then again, it must be strong to perform uh, the it, to, to hold the entire because the vehicle like 
it weighs a few tons a vehicle so it must be strong enough to uh, like hold the the entire vehicle it should be balanced both statically as well as dynamically uh, again these these are force balancing things which will you, you have statics maybe mechanical people will have statics in their first semester uh, other branches may have it in the second semesters uh, and dynamics uh, you will have in subsequent semesters so it should be balanced it should be light as possible the wheels must be light uh, so that the unsprung weight is least now again unsprung weight what you uh, like it's, it's another term that's used over here uh, i can explain what unsprung weight is in a very brief detail but uh, i'm not going into unsprung weight because it's like it's it's not like very deep related to the session like uh, not going into that so uh, and it should be possible to remove or mount the wheel easily because if you can't like unmount and mount easily then again it's uh, problematic uh, its material should not weaken with weathering and age because you suppose in kolkata you go go through rainy seasons as well through winters as well through rough roads and everything so suppose if the wheel suddenly starts rusting and after a certain point the wheel crumbles down and the car just collapses so those sort of things we don't want so uh, the material should be selected as such that it does not weaken with weathering and age uh, in case the material is susceptible to corrosion it must be given suitable protective treatment so this was the uh, basic thing Uh, now coming to types of wheels so there are primarily three types of wheels there are wire wheels light alloy wheel and pressed disc steel wheel so uh, this is a wheel which was used predominantly all throughout the 20th century like in all those old cars the austins and all those things these uh, type of wheels were used it is lightweight and uh, it dissipates heat but it does not dissipate heat as easily as this and this all right so uh, and heat dissipation is a very important factor in case of wheels because suppose uh, a lot of heat is produced inside the engine the, the inside of the vehicle tremendous amount of heat is generated so if the wheels are not able to dissipate heat like uh, sufficiently the heat is going to come and accumulate on the wheels and the tires are going to melt out so that is the basic problem why uh, it needs to dissipate it like pretty efficient uh, the wire wheels were difficult to uh, maintain like it 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 had some maintenance issues uh, so that was the basic wire wheel the press this steel wheel is a very common kind of wheel like they are used in uh, trucks and all those sort of things used it's a very uh, common kind of wheel used it's very easy to maintain and it's got a good efficiency of heat dissipation so this is the press disc steel wheel uh, the light alloy wheel like you can see it's already the bmw uses it a lot of like expensive vehicles use it so, and this is most expensive all right so in terms of expense this is the most expensive the light alloy wheel it it dissipates heat the most efficiently among all three it provides greater strength and stability and obviously the cost is high among all so uh, that's why it's used in uh, like high end vehicles bmw audi ferrari and all those sort of cars the racing cars or the high end uh, suvs and all those they use light alloy wheels in general so these were the three kinds of wheels so after wheels we'll get into tires so any doubts in wheels up until this point Any doubt? If there's no doubt, I'll move on to tires. Okay, I'll 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 uh, proceed with tires and then I'll uh, pause if there's any doubt. So uh, tire again, you know, uh, it basically covers the wheel. So it's a ring-shaped component that surrounds the wheel's rim to transfer a vehicle's load from the axle through the wheel to the ground and to provide traction on the surface over which the wheel travels. So one of the most major utilities of tire. i'll go to the next slide uh, first is to provide a cushioning between the road and the wheel because the wheel is made of metals so it's abrasive and like if you if the wheel did not have a soft cushion so like it will cause a lot of problems like when imagine on the hard pitch road that metal wheel like grazing along with that much weight on top of it like it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a bit of an issue so uh, it provides a soft cushioning between uh, road and wheel adequate traction traction 
is basically the control that the uh, that the driver gets when driving the wheel. It's generated from friction primarily, like how well he is being able to control the vehicle at various speeds, even at high speed or maybe low speed. So traction is the control that uh, the driver is ensured. So that's the control. Um, uh, then the uh, tire has it transmits braking force and support cornering effect for smooth steering. Uh, it, uh, like when you press the brakes, it the tires are the like there's there's the primary sort of the, or the initial thing why friction is produced and the like the tire screeches its way and stops the car. So it's very important in uh, uh, brake in the safety of the vehicle as well as for smooth steering as well. And of course, it supports car weight. So uh, if you're interested in what the tire is, these are the tray and the sidewall, uh, cap plies, body plies, inner plies, and all these things. You can go through this. Again, will be covered in detail during the tire session. So um, that's the basic thing about the tire. Now, coming back to this slide, there are primarily three types of tire used. The dry tire, wet tire, and intermediate tire. Now, can any one of you like unmute and say what's the difference you notice between these three tires? Surface. Mm -hmm. surface. Yes, sir. The surface of each tire is different for just, just like for dry tire. And mm -hmm. for wet, it's a very rugged surface kind of thing. And for intermediate, it's in between. It's not too rugged, it's not too smooth. It is not too rugged, it's not too smooth. Yes. So, yes. Uh, so, the dry tire, it is primarily used in, or like it's pretty evident on dry roads, like pretty simple terms. And these are used primarily in racing cars. All right, the dry tires. Because the racing is usually done on plain like uh, roads where uh, it's it's not too wet, and these are able to generate better control at very high speeds. All right, so the dry tires. Uh, okay, one basic thing which I am telling at like this differentiation between tires, you might have a confusion as to with which tire can I go the fastest. Like this might be a confusion in all of your minds. So to answer your question, you can go up to 300 km per hour with all the three tires. All right. Like you can go with 300 km per hour both uh, in all uh, dry, wet and intermediate tires. The differences, however, come in how well the control you are being able to acquire depending on in which conditions you are driving. If you are driving in wet conditions, you would prefer a wet tire and you would want to go at lower speeds. Because suppose uh, you're driving in snow, like in Kolkata, the rain is not so much that it, it might, in Kolkata, we use intermediate tires, like mostly, uh, because we don't need those sort of, and intermediate tires are economic as well. So one more point, they are economic as well. But uh, in, uh, suppose snowy areas in US and all those sort of areas, where the surfaces tend to skid a lot more. We use wet tires over there. So, because the traction is much better. So, the treads, these are called the treads. These patterns which are engraved on the uh, tire surface, they provide a lot better traction of the roads. So, uh, the friction is more like you can relate to that. So, the wet tires, they allow the wheels to uh, get better control. So, at higher speeds, you are able to control better the dry tire they generate better control in dry surfaces at very high speeds. What, you might ask that there is no like tread pattern. How are they able to generate uh, friction very properly? So what happens is this is made out of a very soft material. All right, it's a very soft jelly-like material. So uh, so ek bar soch soft material ko tum agar koi hard road ke upar rakhte ho, matlab ek hard pitch ka road hai, uh, dry surface है तो उसके ऊपर एक बहुत सॉफ्ट जेली टाइप सब्सटेंस अगर रखते हो तो जेली क्या करता है वो रोड का वो शेप लेके वो पकड़ लेता है ना वो जेली एकदम मतलब रोड को एकदम ग्रिप कर लेता है फैल के उस सरफेस के ऊपर मतलब समझा पा रहा हूं ये क्या क्या बोलना चाह रहा हूं मतलब बहुत सॉफ्ट है तुम उसको एक बहुत हार्ड सरफेस के ऊपर रख के देखो तुम जेली को या पानी को मतलब रख के देखो वो उसी के अलोंग मॉडिफाई हो जाता है वो हार्ड सरफेस के अलोंग तो वही ये सॉफ्ट टायर में ये ड्राई टायर में भी आता है ये बहुत सॉफ्ट होता है तो बहुत बढ़िया ट्रैक्शन जनरेट करता है हार्ड रोड्स के ऊपर 
बहुत बढ़िया ग्रिप देता है कि मतलब एक हार्ड रोड के ऊपर मैं उसी के तरीके से वो लेस हो जाऊं लेकिन इसका डिसएडवांटेज क्या होता है उसके लिए ये बहुत जल्दी खराब हो जाता है मतलब तुम जितना इसको चलाओगे ये बहुत जल्दी वो छ, मतलब छाल वाल उठ के ये खराब हो जाता है इसलिए तुम लोग देखना कि रेसिंग में ये यूज होते हैं लेकिन रेसिंग में टायर चेंज करने के लिए पिट्स रहते हैं मतलब रेस करते करते यहाँ पे जाके वो टायर चेंज किया कुछ और चलाया गाड़ी को वापस से वो लैप करके वापस से टायर चेंज किया ये बहुत जल्दी खराब हो जाते हैं और बहुत एक्सपेंसिव भी होते हैं मतलब ये ड्राई टायर जो है तो लेकिन बहुत फास्ट होते हैं क्योंकि तुम उतने स्पीड पे ड्राई रोड पे कंट्रोल पा सकते हो तो ये ड्राई टायर का खासियत था और वेट टायर जो है तुमको बेटर ट्रैक्शन देता है वेट कंडीशन और इंटरमीडिएट टायर दोनों का काम करता है इकोनॉमिक भी है तो जनरल यूजर्स इसी को प्रेफर करते हैं इंटरमीडिएट टायर तो इसको होपफुली मैं समझा पाया तो ये ये तुम लोग देख लेना ये ड्राई टायर्स का जो मैं बोला वही लिखा हुआ है मोटा मोटी वेट टायर्स का भी वही लिखा हुआ है इंटरमीडिएट का भी वही लिखा हुआ है इस तरफ हायर ग्रिप रहता है इस तरफ हायर ड्यूरेबिलिटी रहता है तो मोटा मोटी यही चीज है टायर का इसका तो इसके बाद स्टियरिंग है टायर और गील्स में कोई डाउट हो तो बताना देते हैं उसको चैट में लिख सकते हो पूछ सकते हो अनूट करते अच्छा ये दीप्रो आतिब हैज आस्क्ड दैट डस द डस द फैक्ट दैट वेदर अ टायर इज मेड फुल्ली ऑफ रबर और इट इज फिल्ड अप विथ एयर डस इट इफेक्ट द स्पीड ऑफ द व्हीकल डस दिस फैक्ट इफेक्ट द स्पीड ऑफ द व्हीकल इफ द इफ द टायर इज फुल्ली मेड अप ऑफ रबर यस it will probably depend a bit on the conditions like uh, i am i am getting what you are trying to say wo ye kafi innovative sawal hai jisne bhi pucha hai isko matlab hawa ke jagah rubber agar bhar dete hai andar to ek disadvantage jo dimag mein aata hai ki uh, rubber ka abrasion hota rehta hai matlab with time to wo normal tires mein bhi hota rehta hai lekin cost of making shayad par padega see solid rubber is too heavy to make a tire गाड़ी वेट अनेक हो जाए गाड़ी चलते ठीक है जी एप्लीकेशन टायर लोड अनेक बेस सलिड टायर यूज कर टायर बार्ष्ट हो जाएन थे सलिड टायर यूज कर Deeper to fast it up. Okay, the doubts have been cleared till this point. Uh, no new doubt. You can proceed. So, uh, steering mechanism. I am not very deep to look. 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 तो मैं बेसिक रैक एंड पिनियन सिस्टम एक्सप्लेन कर देता हूँ तो क्या होता है जब भी तुम इस स्टीयरिंग को घुमाते हो तुम इसको मान लो रोटेट किया तो ये स्टीयरिंग कॉलम और स्टीयरिंग शाउट भी रोटेट होते हैं इसके साथ साथ ठीक है तो जैसे ये रोटेट होते हैं यहाँ पे ये रैक और मतलब तो ये जो पार्ट है इसको रैक रोटेट है और ये वाला पार्ट यहाँ पे पिनियन है तो पिनियन भी रोटेट होगा जैसे तुम देख पा रहे हो यहाँ पे पिनियन भी रोटेट होगा जैसे तुम स्टियरिंग घुमा रहे हो तो पीछे जैसे रोटेट होगा ये देखो यहाँ पे टीथ क्या हुआ है तो ये टीथ क्या करता है ये वो ये रैक के ऊपर सॉरी भैया योर वॉइस इज नॉट ऑडिबल हेलो ऑडिबल अच्छा की टू माय एंड इट्स ऑडिबल इज एवरीवन फेसिंग द सेम प्रॉब्लम ऑडिबल ऑडिबल ओके Yes, you can rejoin. अच्छा तो मैं कंटिन्यू कर रहा हूँ तो मोटा मोटी जो देख पा रहा हूँ कि स्टियरिंग जब घुमाओगे तो स्टियरिंग कॉलम स्टियरिंग शाउट भी घूमेंगे उसके साथ साथ पिनियन भी घूमेगा तो पिनियन जैसे जैसे घूमेगा क्योंकि ये टीथ है तो ये रैक भी स्लाइड करेगा ये रैक जो ये कंस्ट्रेंट है ये सिर्फ टू एंड फ्रो मोशन ही कर सकता है तो ये स्लाइड करेगा तो पिनियन जैसे घूमेगा रैक स्लाइड करेगा और उसके हिसाब से ये टाइरॉइड जॉइंट्स जो है वो रेसिप्रोकेटिंग मोशन करते हैं मतलब बोथ रोटेटरी एज वेल एज ट्रांसलेटरी तो उससे व्हील्स में 
मतलब वो घुमाते हैं मोटा मोटी यही पॉइंट है एग्जैक्ट क्रिस्टल क्लियर मैकेनिज्म में अभी नहीं घुस रहा क्योंकि उनका दिमाग खराब हो जाएगा पूरा अगर वो करने जाओ तो लेकिन स्टीयरिंग का मोटा मोटी यही चीज है तो तुम लोग बाद में पढ़ोगे कि कैसे वो होता है ये एकरमैन मैकेनिज्म और एकरमैन ज्योमेट्री है इसका एक छोटा जो चीज है कि व्हेन द व्हील्स आर टर्न्ड बाय द सेम एंगल दे विल नेवर मीट एट अ कॉमन पॉइंट तो अगर कभी कुछ देखोगे तो ये व्हील्स कभी भी सेम एंगल्स पे नहीं घूमते हैं मतलब जब भी ये होता है डिफरेंट एंगल्स पे घूमते हैं तो इसका एक वीडियो था मैं दिखा देता हूं वीडियो ये भी समझने में सुविधा होगा एक एक सेकंड में एक वीडियो दिखाता हूं स्टीयरिंग का थोड़ा बहुत क्लैरिटी आएगा उसमें वीडियो दिख रहा है ना सभी को ऑडियो आ रहा है क्या ना दिख रो यस नोट नो ऑडियो इज नॉट देयर विंडो प्रेजेंट कर मोटाम बोझा अच्छा मैंने यहाँ पे तुम लोग मतलब पढ़े होगे गए में रोटेशन जिन लोग पढ़े हो तुम्हारा व्हील्स घूमता ही क्यों है प्योर रोलिंग की वजह से वो बॉटम मोस्ट पॉइंट का वेलोसिटी जीरो होता है व्हील्स इक्वल टू आर ओमेगा रहता है तो इसीलिए व्हील घूम पाता है तो कॉन्टेक्ट पॉइंट पे जीरो होता है अगर नहीं होता है तो हम लोग बोलते हैं ना कि स्लिपिंग हो रहा है या स्पीड कर रहा है वो चीज तो वो घूम नहीं पाता है अगर तुम्हारा वो बॉटम पॉइंट का वेलोसिटी जीरो नहीं होता है तो वो घूम नहीं पाता है तो ये प्योर मतलब रोलिंग के हिसाब से ये मतलब समझ के देखना जो चीज हो रहा है मोटा मोटी तो विच इज तो ये प्योर रोलिंग समझा रहा है इस पॉइंट पे तो जब स्टीयरिंग से हम लोग व्हील को घुमाते हैं तो क्या होता है एक बार ये ऑब्जर्व करके देखो हाँ एक पॉइंट पे ट्रांसलेशन है दूसरे पॉइंट पे रोटेशन हो रहा है ठीक है मतलब v इज इक्वल टू वो आर ओमेगा का तो पीछे की तरफ स्लिपिंग टेंडेंसी है और v आगे की तरफ है तो रोटेशनल वेलोसिटी ये हो गया लेकिन क्योंकि मतलब गाड़ी सीधा चल रहा था तो ट्रांसलेशनल वेलोसिटी ऐसा इनिशियली होना पड़ता तो अगर ऐसा होता तो गाड़ी स्पीड कर जाता इसीलिए बोलते हैं तुम लोग सुने हो कि जब टर्न लेते हैं तो स्पीड कम भी रखा कीजिए मतलब अगर बहुत जोर स्पीड का रहेगा तो ये अभी देखो क्या होता है ये जैसे जैसे चलता रहेगा ये ट्रांसलेशनल वेलोसिटी कंपेंसेट कर देगा रोटेशनल वेलोसिटी को इसका भी वो एरो का डिरेक्शन इस तरफ आ जाएगा ये, ये अभी दिखा देखो देखो ये धीरे धीरे ऐसे आ जाता है तो वापस से ये प्योर रोलिंग होने लगता है ये बॉटम मोस्ट पॉइंट का वीज इक्वल टू आर ओमेगा हो जाता है तो ये इससे अगर बहुत जोर से कोई गाड़ी घुमाता है तो वो स्पीड कर जाता है वो क्या करके वो स्क्रीचिंग नॉइस करके वो जो धकेल जाता है वो इसलिए होता है क्योंकि ये कंपेंसेट नहीं कर पाता है इस चीज को तो इसलिए धीरे करना पड़ता है लेकिन ये अच्छा हाँ ये अभी वो समझा रहा है कि इसका एंगल जो देखो ये दो फ्रंट व्हील 
ये दो फ्रंट व्हील्स जो है दोनों तुम्हारा एंगल ऑफ इंक्लीनेशन अलग है और जो तुम्हारा रियर व्हील है वो तो पैरल है दोनों तो वो आके एक सेंटर पॉइंट पे मीट करते हैं तुम लोग एक कॉन्सेप्ट पढ़े हुए रोटेशन में इंस्टेंटेनियस सेंटर ऑफ रोटेशन बोल के तो अगर ये सेंटर एक पॉइंट पे आके नहीं रुकता है तो घूमेगा नहीं गाड़ी पॉइंट वही है तो अगर और ये दो व्हील्स अगर डिफरेंट एंगल्स पे रोटेटेड नहीं होते तो ये दो लाइन जो है ये पैरल बन जाते तो ये समझ पा रहे हो ना अगर ये दो व्हील्स जो है फ्रंट दो व्हील्स के ऊपर देखो फ्रंट दो व्हील्स अगर सेम एंगल पे नहीं रोटेट हुए रहते तो वो पैरल बन जाते ये जो दो लाइन्स है तो वो कभी मीट ही नहीं करते इन्फाइनाइट पे जाकर मीट करते तो इसीलिए इन दोनों को डिफरेंट एंगल्स पे टर्न होना पड़ता है मतलब जब हम लोग मतलब गाड़ी को रोटेट करो ये ये जो चीज है हाँ ये कॉमन पॉइंट पे मीट होना चाहिए ये प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्टीयरिंग है यही बता रहा है यहाँ पे हाँ क्योंकि सेम एंगल हो गया तो अभी मतलब वो मीट ही नहीं कर पाएगा तो देखो अब देखो वो रैक एंड पिनियन सिस्टम को समझाएगा ये ध्यान से एक बार देख लो रैक है जो टू एंड फ्रो ही मूव कर सकता है उसके ऊपर पिनियन है जो रोटेट करता है और रैक को टू एंड फ्रो स्लाइड करवा पाता है वो आराम से व्हील्स अटैच टाइर के साथ कनेक्टेड है टायर और जैसे प्रोकेट करते हैं बोर्ड ट्रांसलेशन और रोटेशन करते हैं तो मोटा मोटी इस तरीके से स्टीयरिंग का मेकेनिज्म होता है तो यही है मोटा मोटी स्टीयरिंग मेकेनिज्म का जो है डेप्थ में आगे तुम लोग और देखोगे जो चीज है तो स्टीयरिंग का इतना ही था कोई किसी का कोई डाउट इस पॉइंट पर Any doubt, guys? Always feel free. No boundaries, no restriction on doubt asking. Shagnik is saying no, Dada. Okay. Move for the next. Okay. Okay. Then uh, Deepan. Yes, yes. I'll present the screen then. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so is it visible? Yes. Yes, yes. Slide show. Yes, yes. I'll do it. Uh, do it. Okay, so. Uh, Am I audible enough? Yes, to the full screen call. Okay, okay, don't worry. I'll go on that. Acha, so uh, breaks. Uh, I'll do the full screen uh, later on. <clears throat> so before uh, discussing the break, just a short idea. Of course, that breaks. What it is used for? It is used for basically. Uh, if you are not able to see, uh, in case so. brakes is a mechanical device of course and it is used for absorbing energy from a system which is in motion so that system might be in translational motion or it is in rotational motion or it is in general motion that is basically translational plus rotational whatever it is so brake will absorb energy from the system and will make the system stop so to stop the vehicle a brake is a very important component and we cannot proceed forward without brakes so let's uh, first see this uh, diagram and try to understand it uh the thing is ki there is an important law in uh, fluid so that is pascal's law uh what was pascal's law first uh, any of you tell me hello am i audible uh to any fluid if we apply a pressure at a point it is transmitted equally and uh, uniformly to 
all the points. Yes, that's uh, uh, that's correct. So Pascal's law uh, states that. Uh, let me see that pen option is not getting selected. Yeah. Yeah. So Pascal's law we have studied in fluid that you apply a force here and there is a force generated here. Now the thing is key the pressure which is generated at this point of fluid. It is transmitted equally through every point of this fluid and it is also transmitted here. So pressure at point A and pressure at point B they are basically same. So P A or you can say here uh, P1 whatever it is P A is equal to P B. So P A is equal to P B. So uh, F1 A1 F1 by A1 because the force that you have applied here is F1 is equal to F2 by A2. So you can see that Pascal's law that beautiful application of Pascal's law lies here that F2 from this equation is uh, a2 by a1 into f1 so if the second area that second area is very large and then the force will get multiplied of course so by just using a small pedal you can actually lift a large car that is the hydraulic lift so beautiful application of pascal's law and this equation that is written here f1 d1 is equals to f2 d2 this is energy conservation equation so the work done by this force here is basically equal to the work done by this force on on this uh, platform. So this is energy conservation. So this is another way of representing this uh, law. So in terms of pressure and in terms of energy. So any one equation you use that is Pascal's law. Now we will uh, go to types of brake. So mainly brakes are two types disc brake and drum brake. So what is disc brake is actually you see uh, this is called the disc brake this one. Now this disc brake is actually connected with wheel. So let me just show you. Uh, let me just show you in whiteboard. Uh, I will draw a qualitative diagram. OK, you don't need very deep understanding. So this is a disc brake. So I am just doing the uh, front view. So it is like a circle, but I am looking it from here. So that's why it is looking like this. There is an assembly. OK. There is an assembly uh, parallel or beside this disc brake and on this assembly there are two uh, brake pad. These brake pads are rubber pad. OK. These brake pads are basically what it holds the disc brake together. This is disc brake and this these are basically brake pad. Uh, are you uh, following me or is there any problem? Hello. Yes, you are audible. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. So take it. So whatever uh, the thing is key, there is a fluid line connected with this uh, assembly, this assembly is called brake caliper assembly. Brake caliper assembly. So you will learn everything in detail. If you forget the names, uh, nothing to worry. You can just uh, remember it is like uh, this. There is an assembly. There is a there is a rubber pads. So this uh, rubber pads are used to hold these disc brakes together. Now there is a fluid line. There is a fluid line, and this fluid line is connected with a arrangement. That arrangement is another arrangement. We will see it. So whenever you apply brake. Whenever this is the pedal, this is the pedal of the car. So you apply the brake and this there is a piston here. Inside this piston there is a fluid. So you apply the brake. So this piston gets pushed and what happens? There's a chamber. The fluid inside this chamber is compressed. So what happened? There's an increase in pressure and this pressure is transmitted everywhere. This pressure is transmitted and what happened that uh, let me draw it a few more correctly. There is a minor correction. Now this brake pad is actually connected with the piston. Now this piston is connected with this fluid line. Now whenever there is a change in pressure, this change in pressure is actually makes the fluid pushing the uh, piston, this piston. 
Okay, this is a, a piston. This is a piston. So piston gets uh, force from the fluid and this pushes the brake pad. This brake pad pushes the disc brake. So it is actually trying to uh, hold the disc brake that you cannot rotate further. So you just stop it right there. You just stop it. Now, as a result, what happens? This disc brake does not uh, move from its position. It is a it is a rigid system. It is rotating in its position. So this disc brake is like a wall. OK, imagine it like a wall. What happens uh, that when you press a wall, you itself uh, you itself get displaced in the opposite direction. So what happened as a result that uh, this brake pad is pushing this disc brake and this brake pad is connected with this brake caliper assembly. So the brake caliper assembly gets displaced in this direction, right hand side, as because of Newton's third law. Of course, we all know that. Now this brake caliper assembly has this brake pads attached with them, this both brake pad. So whatever happens that this brake pad also gets displaced in the right hand direction. So let me repeat it again. You you press the pedal. You change the pressure of the brake fluid. That brake fluid pressure is transmitted along the line and it goes to a piston. That piston pushes this brake pad and this brake pad pushes the disc brake. Now this disc brake is fixed in its position. So the brake caliper assembly gets displaced in the right hand direction because of Newton's third law. And this brake, this another brake pad, which is the rubber pad, it is also attached with the uh, brake caliper assembly because this brake caliper assembly has two brake pads attached on both hands, si both side of the uh, disc brake. So it is also getting shifted on the right hand side direction. As a result, what is happening that this disc brake is getting squeezed from both direction. So that's how it uh, just stops rotating. It's ro it was rotating, it gets squished. So it will uh, affect the friction will be there. There will be a lot of heat generation. So it will eventually come to rest. So I will just show you this. Uh, and there is a drum brake. Drum brake is uh, another system. You will study drum brake in detail later on because this is a bit tricky to understand at first. So we will not discuss it here. There's just you to remember the name. There are two things. One is disc brake. Another is drum brake. So we discussed the uh, like disc brake uh, in a in a bit of detail, not very much. I've missed a lot of technicalities. Uh, for uh, deliberately. So you can see the arrangement here. It is the uh, that pedal that you press that brake pedal whenever you press it. So uh, sorry, that's a very bad foot. Uh, ignore it. Uh, so whenever you press it, you change the pressure and you change all the pressure in this fluid line and this disc and this brake pads actually holds this disc brake. So eventually the car comes to rest. Now that section which I was talking about, these are master cylinder things. Uh, right now, no need to uh, remember the name, but if you wish, you can uh, take the screenshot. Uh, you can see the names later on. Uh, you can Google it also. But this is a, just a insight, just a basic insight. How does it work? So after this uh, break, uh, after discussing disc and drum brake, chassis. So as Deepro has mentioned that uh, chassis is basically the uh, load bearing framework. So you need that uh, skeleton of the it's the skeleton of the car. So that mount board as Deepro has said. So on this mount board there will be different component. There will be engine. Uh, there will be uh, different kind of springs attached. There will be differential. There will be shaft. All of these things will be mounted on chassis. So these chassis will actually support each and every component. So it will support the weight of all those components. So it will bear the load of the vehicle body. Of course, the whole vehicle will be uh, mounted on this uh, chassis. So of course, it needs to bear that load and it provides the space and mounting location. So there are different points on chassis. Remember one thing that uh, chassis design is one of the most significant design the challenges that uh, engineers have to go through. Because you need to design a chassis keeping in mind different requirements. So whenever something comes related to design, it's always the tricky part. 
because you have to make space for each and every component you have to look up whether it is able to support the load or not so you will uh, actually analyze the chassis at every possible angle so next the point is supporting the weight of various component of the system so just like i have said there is this uh, drive shaft differential then engine and then what not the whole uh, vehicle body that it will be mounted on okay so that's how the chassis should uh, be able to take the load of different things so it will provide a structure to the car the outer structure of the uh, car will be decided by the chassis what kind of chassis you are providing it so it will also support that also so chassis design is actually they are analyzed in a software so 3d softwares are used so 3d softwares are used so like uh, ansys uh, solid works so these type of things are used and you will uh, definitely learn about them but these are very much the later on when you get selected in the club when you are due through the all the processes when you make it to the club you will definitely learn this software this solid works especially because ch for chassis we need that so that is the basic uh, thing we need to keep in mind for chassis now comes the different types of chassis so ladder frame so ladder frame chassis uh okay uh, let me just uh, go back to the uh, meat once more uh so uh, up to this point is there any doubt i have actually uh, gone through it in a bit of a hurry but is there any doubt regarding whatever i have explained there will be many doubts like missing of technicalities but besides that whatever i have explained are there any ambiguity or doubts go ahead like feel free to type in the chat box and mute yourself and ask like go ahead but till now there's no chat coming so you can move forward like we have a okay. doubt okay acha uh, one one doubt is could, could you, you explain, explain the function of the chassis function of the chassis okay so it is like uh, you see if i draw a rough sketch of a car right like a normal car that you see on roads okay so like so there are many uh, components of car that are involved here see this is the whole metallic body okay so the whole body is there inside the body there will be engines okay so there will be transmission system like in the previous diagram that you have seen let me uh, go to that slide if you remember so see right so see there is a there are different things that involved so there is engine there is transmission there is drive shaft there is differential so these kind of things are to be present and they have they must be carrying some weight na they they are not massless or like that so they need to be fitted at inside the body of the car so it is like if you uh, think in layman terms if you think in layman terms like uh, what is the base here what is the base here which are supporting all these component like there must be a mounting board so without that board if you think in a plain term like without this supporting board the all components that are there they will just fall down like how will you be able to support the component you need to fix it in a position so chassis is the skeleton of the whole uh, car like uh, we have skeleton skeleton is supporting us without skeleton we cannot just we will just be a like a cloth so chassis is the skeleton of the car so it is used to support the different components of the car so let me just uh, go to that slide of chassis uh yeah mm, where it is so see there are different function of chassis so the whole vehicle body again i am uh, explaining these few points like the vehicle body so the outer body of the vehicle that must be supported by some solid structure beneath it otherwise how can you just support a vehicle in a like a, like a, in a air you cannot support it right you can see in this picture there are wheels and wheels are connected to some rigid structure now this rigid structure will actually support all the component and all the body 
otherwise how can the body be fixed in an air right it cannot be fixed it needs to be fixed on a solid object that solid support is chassis so it is providing the space and mounting location you need to fix different component at different position of the car so you need that uh, spacing and all the mountings position where you will uh, fix those component say uh, and thirdly you can you will have to support the weight of the component right to aisa nahi ki matlab uh, bas utha ke khade main weight hi nahi le pa raha wo chassis pe jaise engine rakha wo chassis hi toot gaya aisa nahi hona chahiye जितने भी कंपोनेंट इस चैसी के ऊपर सपोर्ट होने वाले हैं सारे कंपोनेंट्स का एक वेट होगा वो वेट को ये चैसी सपोर्ट करना चाहिए अगर नहीं कर पाएगा ये टूट जाएगा फिर चैसी हमारे किसी काम का नहीं फिर तो गाड़ी खड़ा नहीं हो पाएगा स्केलेटन ही नहीं है गाड़ी का स्केलेटन ही नहीं है सो इट इज प्रोवाइडिंग द होल स्ट्रक्चर टू द कार टू सम ऑल दीज पॉइंट इट इज प्रोवाइडिंग अ स्ट्रक्चर टू द कार इन गोइंग टू द डिटेल दीज आर दर सेपरेट पॉइंट सो इज इट क्लियर could you tell us about the brake once again okay let me then uh, brake, go through brake brake uh, like uh, you'll have a separate session on it like it's a like big topic like the basic you will get the yes. recording of what the session is so uh, like you 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 can watch the recording once again like the brakes part like you have to go over it once again like we are a bit short on time so uh, go over the recording a bit you can you can move forward that okay okay now uh, there are some uh, ladder frame chassis so ladder frame chassis as the name itself suggest it is like a uh, ladder okay so ladder means uh, you know what is shape is like so its shape is like a ladder so that's why it's called ladder frame chassis now this ladder frame chassis are used in uh, heavy duty vehicle because they have very high payload high payload means it can support a lot of amount of weight that it has to bear and secondly there is a uh, chassis which is monocoque this is a most common type of chassis so like even if you have seen that uh, those uh, bollywood movie like tarzan the wonder car uh, there ajay devgan was uh, designing that uh, car so in a software he was actually doing this kind of diagrams uh, if i remember correctly so these kind of diagrams are common for car designers they have to design the chassis first so these are the most common type of thing in fact cars by the tata motors so they have this kind of chassis monocoque chair monocoque frame monocoque chassis this is the tubular frame chassis it is used in mainly racing cars so racing cars of course you can imagine that what kind of shape will this chassis take that one person vehicle so of course this is a racing car chassis so these kind of chassis are easily identifiable this is the most common type of chassis and these are used for specifically racing purposes now uh, regarding ladder frame chassis we may not be able to identify always so uh, there are few photos like uh, you can see here this is mahindra thar so mahindra thar is an example uh, this is uh, toyota fortuner so toyota fortuner another example so these are the things and this is of course truck uh, i don't know the detail model name so anyways this is a truck and there are many examples like suvs also they also use a ladder frame chassis okay so suspension system now suspension system is uh, is a bit tricky at first and if i go by the definition here uh, it might confuse you so let me just uh, go to the uh, like like a video i will show you first then i will be back on presentation so let me once minute okay so let me just show you a video you may be able to understand Uh, okay so it is visible yes 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 okay okay uh okay 
is there any audio okay let no. me then try then term given to the system of screen uh, how about now yes it is okay okay problem with headphones shock absorbers and linkages that connects a vehicle to its wheels and allows relative suspension system is Suspension system is the term given to the system of springs, shock absorbers, and linkages that connects the vehicle to its wheels and allows relative motion between the two. Okay, at this point, uh, uh, I'm audible enough, right? Because I'm not wearing headphones. Yeah, yeah. So basically, when you uh, take a sharp turn, uh, that vehicle, whenever you are turning in a direction, that vehicle seems to roll in an opposite direction, right? So you might have seen in a movie, so that sharp turn takes place and the vehicle tends to roll. So suspension system makes sure that the vehicle does not roll too much. So otherwise it will cause a body roll and it will be a bad accident and a bad day at hospital. So uh, this is the thing suspension system ensures. So as you see, this is one of the most important point. So like the basic purpose of suspension system was to provide the comfort, the comfort to the uh, passengers or the rider. So any shock, the roads are highly uneven. So any shock that you receive is not at all, uh, it is desirable. So you need to reduce those shocks. Also there will be vibration of different component because you see the component one, uh, tire is hitting one component by creating vibration it's transmitting to other component it's vibrating so that's a very bad thing we don't want that so all these shocks and vibration needs to be minimized for the purpose of the passengers comfort so it is one of the principal function of suspension system it's a basic thing expected from a suspension system So uh, this point uh, you can see it is saying it prevents uh, excessive body squat when accelerating or heavily loaded. Uh, like in cartoon films, you might have seen that when a car is uh, accelerating, so it is like the front part of the car jumps up and the uh, bottom part, uh, the rear part of the car just goes down. So there is a tilt. So if the car is moving in this, uh, in your sense, it will be right hand direction. So if the car is moving in the right hand direction, so that the front part will jump up and the bottom rear part will be jumped down. So there is a tilt that the vehicle will going to, uh, the vehicle will face it when it is going to accelerate. So uh, in cartoon, it's a bit ex exaggerated, but uh, you can uh, see it will happen for real life also, but in a smaller sense. Suspension system ensures that this tilt is also not too much. We don't want that. Everything is regarding the comfort of passenger. That passenger is important. The most important is human humanity or uh, whatever it is. So. Same thing when you try to apply the brake, so the car is moving suddenly brake and the car, the rear part of the car goes up and the front part goes down. So again, the tilt and suspension system ensure that that tilt is not too much. Again, uh, comfort of the rider. So these are the things. Now, uh, before going to suspension system component, I would uh, say that you don't need to worry about what components are there or not. I will not show you in detail what components are there. Those will be covered in the session very well. This is the first session and suspension system is, uh, is a bit tricky to understand at first. So just enjoy the essence. It's just 
to make a point suspension is probably one of the most difficult portions in the entire automobile so like you will yes. have a dedicated session on this and not maybe just one maybe three or four on this so like don't like sweat uh, over if you not concept... able to understand suspension hello hello so, are there sponsors also applicable to two wheelers also majority of the concepts are applicable to two wheelers but there there are certain differences we'll also like we'll take a session on motorbikes as well all right so don't worry about that we'll have a session on uh, like operations of motorbikes so there are slight differences but a lot of the parts are similar yes so these are all the components now we will not go into the details and the later part of the video they will try to explain so uh, going by this i will just uh, show you another video a short video uh, i hope you will enjoy it uh, let's see so visible right yes 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 visible okay So you don't need to worry about the design. They will just show it. Just look at it uh, casually. How many of you guys have seen this kind of things? Beneath the vehicle. Okay, respond. I cannot see the chat box. Okay, so you have to unmute and respond. Have you yes, guys seen I this? Have seen this. Yes, I've seen. Yeah, I have seen this in yeah. trucks and bus. Yeah, it is very common. Whenever the, you go on highway and you see those trucks, it's very common. So this is called uh, leaf spring. Okay, and the system of this is leaf spring suspension. Again, you will study it later on, but just see it, enjoy it. Okay, just now you have seen that part uh, that is basically uh, this part and it resembles the shape of the wishbone of bird so that bone is by bi in biological term it is called so it is called wishbone suspension system wherever those kind of parts are involved See, I'm, the only purpose I am uh, I'm seeing uh, I'm making you see this video is just to understand that how physically you can visualize it. You don't need to get into technical detail. They will uh, use many technical terms, so don't be afraid of those. You just see and visualize it that how the suspension system is acting in the real world. The only purpose is that.
so that was all regarding this uh, video so only the basic part that you need to know uh, is the control arm and the steering knuckle about the suspension system so in a nutshell as you can see this is the wheel so this is the wheel and this is the control arm and this is the steering knuckle this part so uh, control arm is the movable lever that fasten the steering knuckle to the vehicle body or frame so it is like making the uh, control arm is basically used for helping the steering knuckle to grasp the body and the wheel very firmly so it is the basic uh, motive of saying that fasten the steering knuckle so that is the basic motive of saying behind that and what is steering knuckle doing it is providing support it is providing support to different kind of component the wheel hub is there bearing and wheel assembly is there you you guys are new to this term so no need to worry so you just see that control arm uh, control arm is helping the uh, steering knuckle and steering knuckle is providing support okay so you can think it in layman terms i am only explaining these in layman terms okay so i am trying my best so I, i hope it is understood so now main function of suspension system that handling the mass and inertia of course that first point you cannot uh, like you have to handle the mass of the vehicle so suspension system in one word if you want in one line actually if you want to say what is suspension system that that will be like it controls the orientation of the car so the car do not uh, behave very erratically like it is twisting it is rolling it is doing on its own so suspension system controls the car's movement so that it is it behaves like a well civilized car and not like it will just uh, be prone to more accidents okay so restoration is one of the important thing because suspension system involves spring so whenever you absorb uh, absorb a shock like there is a road and there is a bumper and the car just jump so the wheel is actually jumping and it must retain the position where it was before so there is a spring involved in that action so restoration is also important suspension system ensures that and whatever vibrations are there you just need to minimize the vibration just damping of the damp vibration i don't give a damp about uh, those vibration so damping so inertia restoration damping are the main objectives of the suspension system in automobile now of course these are uh, different kinds of uh, like suspension system okay uh, are you able to see the presentation no hello no no the the video is visible the ppt is oh, okay 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 so, i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i just oh. left mm Okay, the the people are waiting in the lobby uh, bishal uh, pritam uh, are you there guys they uh, allowed okay okay allowed okay so uh, let me just quickly explain that uh, part which i have just done but you guys weren't able to see that sorry because of my fault uh, that is basically uh, what i am saying ki there are two basic part control arm and steering knuckle very important part now uh, control arm like you have seen this structure right these are like uh, wish bone of the bird so control arm actually helps the steering knuckle so how does it help the steering knuckle to fasten it to the vehicle body or frame so fasten means you hold it firmly so uh, control arm uh, helps the steering knuckle to hold the wheel and the body of the vehicle very firmly so that is one of the principal task and so control arm is holding the steering knuckle so this steering knuckle now steering knuckle is what it is doing it is providing support so presentation is visible to everyone guys right guys yeah yes yeah so steering knuckle is providing a uh, support and support means to support the weight 
तो सपोर्टिंग मीन सपोर्टिंग द वेट ऑफ द व्हील हब बियरिंग एंड व्हील असेंबली सो दीज आर टोटली न्यू टर्म्स डू नॉट वरी अबाउट दैट सो इट इज प्रोवाइडिंग सपोर्ट you just remember this kind of thing that control arm is helping the steering knuckle steering knuckle is providing support so it is a it is like a bit easy for the first day as you guys are seeing it for the first time so like handling the inertia handling the inertia so of course that mass of the vehicle must be uh, controlled and whenever the vehicle on a road then that vibration is there and that tire jumps up it must be able to return back to its position so the tire is moving there is a there is a bumper like that it is jumping and again it again it is coming down so those restorations are done based on the action of spring so springs are important now whatever vibrations are there i don't uh, want them i don't give a damn about them so i will do the damping of the vibration so i just reduce them so inertia restoration and damping are the main objectives of suspension system as you have seen in that previous video also these are the different kind of suspension system these are the wishbone there are two wishbone on each side of the wheel there are two wishbone so double wishbone these leaf springs as you have seen in that video right uh, in which video you have seen this have you seen this shape uh, in any of the video just that i have shown you just right now there i have shown you two videos last one i think yeah last one second one yeah second one yeah, yeah those uh, those attached with the trucks and bus right yes yes yeah yeah very good very good so these are the leaf spring suspension system so now they have been restricted to heavy duty vehicles they were uh, developed very early also they used they were used in older cars but now it is not very much used the designs have changed uh -huh. coil spring suspension system so these kind of suspension systems are very compact so i am talking about uh, this one okay so coil spring suspension so they they are very compact in size and due to this uh, they uh, like the damping like the internal damping like they they very much uh, are well equipped to deal with this damping so they can very well reduce the vibration so they are very much low cost also so that is one of the benefit okay so say that saves money they are used in sedans and hatchbacks so they are these are the some common vehicles that you see on road they are used in this coil spring suspension system now air suspension system so air suspension system highly damped maintenance so very very costly so high maintenance and they comprise of air compressor so air compressor is used in this kind of suspension system functioning we are not interested right now we are just seeing it air suspension coil spring in the previous slide double wishbone leaf spring you can just remember the names you can then understand this mechanism in your own way also but we will also cover them so don't worry next is uh, shock absorbers of course we don't want shock we don't want vibration so whatever shock is there just we just damp them out we don't give a damn about them so dissipating the kinetic energy so damping of the shock impulse so there will be a sudden jerk there is a sudden change in momentum so we need to absorb that so also there the springs are involved in suspension system so whenever springs are involved like those springs must not extend too much or must not be compressed too much so they must be doing their function in a balanced way so shock absorber also ensures that these compression or extensions are maintained so first of all it is uh, basically removing those shocks also it is taking care of that vibration part and on the other hand it is also ensuring ki uh, that spring that you do not you behave in your own way you just don't go out on extending and compressing too much it's uh, it's discomfort for the passenger and i don't want that so yeah uh, like air suspension system is costly so definitely in luxury cars and buses those will be the thing that they will be used in and this is the photo of shock absorber this is these are the some example of air suspension system this is a uh, audi q7 uh, these are the this is mercedes c class uh, this is what this is uh, acha this is what uh, can any of you tell me what these two cars the name of these two cars 
ऑडी एंड रोल्स रॉयस द सेकंड वन इज रोल्स रॉयस फैंटम रोल्स रॉयस फैंटम ओह रोल्स रॉयस फैंटम सम कार्ड फ्रीक्स आर डेफिनेटली हियर रोल्स रॉयस फैंटम या In fact, uh, I would have just responded with uh, Rolls Royce, and you guys have just said Phantom, so you guys are definitely ahead of me. So that's great. And uh, this is Audi, right? So Audi, any idea what uh, version? Though uh, I am not expecting exact answers, you can guess anything. R8. Is it R8? Okay, one answer is R8. Ah. Uh, Any other answer? Okay, so let me state the answer. Uh, it's not R8. It's actually uh, A6. But no worry. They, they actually, uh, frankly, when I look at them, they all uh, look more or less same to me. I would not been able to uh, identify the version. Uh, I was just passing some time, so, so no offense, I guess. This is A6, Audi A6. Okay, so we are done with the basics of suspension system. We will not go into much detail. Now there is this uh, engine control unit. So what does an engine control unit do? Let me go back to a few slides before, and let me remind you that you remember this operation, right? You you understood the basics. I hope it is bit clear. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this thing is actually you can see that there is a synchronization that is taking place. Means all the all uh, all of the components are acting very uh, in an ordered fashion. one after the another as if they know exactly what to do so that is a repetitive function they need to perform so how will these functions be done in a car that is the foremost question so that foremost question is actually answered by that car must have a uh, coordinating center for receiving all the instruction and processing them so that they can deliver some output so it's just like human body we have different functions to do we need to move our hand we need to smile we need to close our eyes so all these functions are coordinated by this one center brain so ecu the engine control unit is also like that in fact in the analogy it is like the head of the car so the brain of the car definitely so is engine control unit is like that only now engine control unit engine control unit takes help of two component so uh, the first component is sensors and the second component is actuator there's these are the uh, two component of ecu now sensor what do they do suppose in a in a particular area there is some fuel required and there is a i'm just talking in a qualitative sense that inside car there is a particular area where air needs to be delivered or some gases need to be extracted out or there is a need of creation of vacuum now these kind of requirements how will you know how will a machine know that these kind of requirements are there so in order to know that you must have sensors so machine can use sense machine can know it from sensor they they sense that thing that there is a deficiency of something and i need to send instruction so this engine sensors are there to so that there is some fuel required or there is some uh, operating condition there are different operating conditions those are required so these uh, things are sensed by sensors and uh, what it does ki it send input signals so it and input signals are sent from sensors to engine control unit so it is just like our nervous system so our nervous system senses different thing it sends instruction to our uh, central nervous system and from there to brain and from there to central nervous system vice versa so sensors send information to ecu now ecu has is basically a, a mounting board on which chips are embedded and these chips have been programmed by a programmer so you can see that uh, while making ecu there are needs of computer science uh, experts and engineers also electronics engineers are required so experts from both field are required in this regard so it is like the 
incorporation of this ecu and all other electronic compu uh, component and programmable components that nowadays the car making is an inter interdisciplinary thing and it is highly interdisciplinary getting day by day it's all connected you cannot just use engineers of one field only it is open to all anyone can join it so ecu so ecu it processes the information how does it process the information so it processes the information based on some pre written codes so programmers have written some code inside it so those codes are there whenever the sensor send information these codes are processed and after that these process informations are sent in the form of electrical signal so these are electrical signals so electrical uh, signals these are sent to actuators so ecu take input signals and it send electrical signal to actuators now actuator is what actuator is a mechanical see actuator in general sense mean it is used for energy conversion now in this case in case of car we mainly use electric electric or electrical actuator so it is a kind of actuator an actuator is a general term it is used for energy conversion so electric actuator what it does it take input this is electric actuator electric actuator it take input that is electric signals electricity i am writing it it and it converts it into mechanical energy useful mechanical energy now those mechanical energy are uh, are seen uh, physically in the form of kinetic energy and that is also in the form of linear motion or rotary motion by means of some mechanical arm so basically actuator is uh, using the electricity to actually direct the different physical component to move that you do do the rotation that you move in a straight line so as you can see uh, in the previous slide uh, let me just go to that part uh, yeah so in this engine you can see that uh, there is a there are different mechanical components involved this is rotating this is rotating this is just doing a, a up and down motion in this uh, direction and this is also doing the same and this is also moving so like these small components need to be controlled they need to be controlled and they need to be actuated and many other components are there so those physical movement of the component will be achieved by only by this uh, thing that is actuator because they will receive the electricity and they will send instruction now you move now you do the rotation now you this part you will do this so a coordinated action will take place so engine control unit this is a diagram again these are the sensors so from sensors the informations are fed so these are the sensors and these are the actuator uh, what it is uh, performing the task like some valve needs to be opened some uh, some component or linkage needs to rotate so these kind of thing actuators sorry actuators yeah so, so actuators. are you guys aware of that uh, there's a huge global uh, chip shortage these days like in the market like semiconductor chip shortage is there in the market these days yes. so any of yes so uh, because of the semiconductor chip shortage like lots of automobile companies are suffering millions of usd losses like they are because they are not being able to like primarily manufacture the ecu there are certain other parts which are also manufactured uh, using semiconductors but like a primary shortage of chips that's why they are not being able to manufacture the engine control unit so huge losses they are incurring so it's a very very important it's the brain of the car so sort of, you can say so it's very important unit it's very important that in order to move car nowadays you need to have these chips so if there is a shortage of chip that industry is in danger whole automobile industry so it's very important nowadays so uh, this were the short description of ecu sensor actuators now let me go to the components of car there are different electrical component of car so let me uh, just uh, go through these these definitions uh, you will definitely be able to read it later on we will share this uh, things with you but later on but let me just uh, demonstrate it in a quick way so that you understand see 
like there is a component called starter motor you can see here starter motor it is a powerful dc motor okay now you see there are two kind of uh, electrical machine that you will be studying uh, that two kind of electrical machines are electrical machines there are two kind one is your uh, that uh, dc motor another is generator now uh, can any of you just have uh, give me this answer what are the differences between these motor and generator Anyone? Uh, motor, motor converts electrical energy to DC. mechanical energy, and generator converts mechanical to electrical energy. Yes, yes, very good, very good. So that is the basic idea, and that's we need to keep in mind. That's a, a very good and crisp answer. So electrical machine, as you can see, motor from electrical to mechanical, from electrical to mechanical, and generator. mechanical to electrical so a uh, starter motor is there so it is a dc motor of course it will take intake whatever dc motor means dc motor means that the electricity that it is taking as input it is a dc current or dc pulse so starter motor is there and uh, there is a thing called battery of the car uh okay battery of the car uh how many of you remember the chapter electrochemistry yes i do uh, it okay. is again taught in our semester other others uh, i want to hear other response also so actually the joint test skip kore dichi ki acha how many of you skipped the electro yeah i remember uh huh uh huh ask me इलेक्ट्रोकेमिस्ट्री uh there are, there are applications of uh, electrochemical cell there is a, a section and you there you might have read about those who those of you who have read uh there is a secondary battery so do you guys remember is that re rechargeable battery one yeah 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 rechargeable battery yeah yeah so rechargeable battery uh otar modhe eta there is a chemical inside that rechargeable battery and that chemical is utilized in a in electrochemical reaction and electricity is produced so it is like in the input of chemical energy and output of electrical energy can you uh, can you any of you uh, tell me uh, what was that chemical it was uh, something of potassium and uh, sulfur and some um, something else was also there i am okay. not able to recollect hcl so for exactly i am not remembering exact now. exact ta ki ache ekta chemical ta ki hey a sulfuric acid yes uh, definitely uh, right answer aur aapko milte hai 5000 ka check anyways so h2so4 and concentration i just don't remember exactly the figure uh, you can look at the book whatever it is so battery is there it is storing the chemical it's uh, producing the electric electrical energy now this electrical energy is actually supplied to the starter motor okay so this electrical energy is supplied to starter motor and starter motor then start and it delivers the mechanical energy Uh, mechanical energy is delivered definitely but where will it go that is the question so this starter motor is actually connected with a crank shaft now this crank shaft is 
crankshaft of what now this crankshaft is basically that of engine this is the engine and you see the you remember the cylinders right there were cylinders do you remember yes so yes so those cylinders and beneath those cylinders are basically the crankshaft so basically the piston these are the cylinder case and there is a piston and pistons are connected with the crankshaft so this starter motor is sub, uh, basically rotating the crankshaft and that way the piston moves up and the engine initially starts functioning so basically battery to starter motor and then to engine now this engine starts its cycle that the dipro has explained that is the intake now you might be wondering ki wo intake matlab shuru kahan se ho raha hai ki like uh, ki wo piston niche ja raha hai and uh, ye jo crank hai wo niche wala portion wo upar ja raha hai so because niche wala portion heavy hota hai piston ke niche wala jo ek cheez tha let me show you that uh, so this portion this big portion is basically heavy so if it is going up when the piston was going down in the intake phase intake phase is this yellow one so it is basically heavy so how it is like uh, going up on its own you might be wondering ki initial engine kaise start ho raha tha ki like kuch to hona chahiye yaar matlab aise hi thodi na start ho jata energy aise hawa mein thodi na hai energy is not in the air uh, so basically yahi baat hai कि यही से स्टार्ट होता है लाइक like, बैटरी से इलेक्ट्रिसिटी आता है और यहां से स्टार्टर मोटर स्टार्ट होता है अच्छा स्टार्टर मोटर कैसे स्टार्ट होता है आप लोग गाड़ी में जाओ और गाड़ी में चाबी डालो गाड़ी के चाबी को घुमाओ ड्रम करके गाड़ी जो स्टार्ट होता है इनिशियल साउंड होता है इनिशियल साउंड स्टार्टर मोटर का होता है तो वो स्टार्टर मोटर का जो साउंड आता है कि कैसे आ रहा है वो बैटरी से इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ले रहा है और बैटरी अपना केमिकल वे मतलब यूटिलाइज करके इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल रिएक्शन करा के इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दे रहा है तो उससे बेसिकली इंजन स्टार्ट हो जाता है सो इनिशियल साउंड दैट दैट साउंड इज एक्चुअली दैट ऑफ स्टार्टर मोटर देन यू गेट द होल व्हीकल वाइब्रेट्स एंड द इंजन स्टार्ट सो इनिशियली वो स्टार्टर मोटर घूमा उसका साउंड था फिर इंजन का साउंड शुरू हो गया इंजन हैज स्टार्टेड इट साइकिल अब मैं तैयार हूं नाउ आई विल प्रोड्यूस पावर नाउ पार्ट ऑफ दिस पावर सो पार्ट ऑफ द इंजन पावर पार्ट ऑफ सब पार्ट ऑफ द एनर्जी इंजन बहुत एनर्जी प्रोड्यूस कर रहा है पार्ट ऑफ दिस एनर्जी इज एक्चुअली गोइंग in a uh, ye matlab mechanical energy this part of the energy is mechanical energy okay so this mechanical energy is going in a uh, device called alternator so alternator kya hai alternator aap hum log previous slide dekhte hai ye alternator kya hai is a type of electric generator to charge the battery so basically alternator ek generator hi hai jo humne abhi decide kiya ki electrical machines motor generator ye hai अब ये ऑल्टरनेटर क्या कर रहा है कि मैकेनिकल एनर्जी ले रहा है और ये मैकेनिकल एनर्जी लेके इलेक्ट्रिसिटी प्रोड्यूस कर रहा है और प्रोड्यूस करा के ये फिर से बैटरी को रिचार्ज कर रहा है सो बेसिकली इन क्लास ट्वेल्व इफ एनी ऑफ यू गाइस दोज ऑफ यू हैव रेड दैट रिएक्शन पार्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल सेल तो सेकेंडरी बैटरी में एक रिएक्शन रहता था कि रिचार्ज के टाइम क्या होगा पूरा का पूरा रिएक्शन ही रिवर्स हो रहा था तो जो रिवर्स रिएक्शन होता है वो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी अब एंटर हो रहा है कि लाइक इलेक्ट्रॉन वाज नॉट इन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ द इक्वेशन इट इज नॉन द राइट हैंड साइड इट इज एंटरिंग इट इज एंटरिंग द बैटरी इट इज कॉजिंग द रिएक्शन एंड इट इज अगेन मेकिंग इट स्टोर एनर्जी सो बेसिकली ऑल्टरनेटर ही है जो बैटरी को फिर से रिचार्ज कर रहा है ताकि वो फिर से स्टार्टर मोटर को दे सके बट रिमेंबर दिस इज नॉट अ क्लोज लूप ओके प्लीज डोंट कंफ्यूज इट दिस इज नॉट अ क्लोज लूप ओके दिस इज नॉट अ क्लोज लूप it's a part of energy that is getting supplied from engine to the alternator that part of mechanical energy so ye jo humne char electrical component hai inka mainly humne yahan pe pura ka pura thoda samajh liya ki ye kaise kaam kar raha hai so iske baad basically hum dekh sakte hai there are different kind of legislation like uh, in european countries euro 1 euro 2 na name is there and each of the uh, name how many Uh, gram of gases they can release per kilometer so climate change is a is a is a hot topic is always a hot topic so there must be some norms that vehicle can not release more than this amount so they these kind of different legislations are used for uh, different versions of vehicle and how much gas they can release carbon monoxide nox pm so these are valid for uh, this is a chart showing the 
European countries. In India, we have this BS legislation. So you will see the BS, uh, this much horsepower or this much CC engine. So that Bharat stage is the legislation for the cars in India. So this is, uh, this is the basic thing that uh, it's not important. I, just for the sake of showing you, I have just shown you this uh, table. That there is, a, there is a thing like we should include whenever we do some project nowadays, we must include the environment factor also because our world is uh, totally uh, ducked up. So we should not ignore it, uh, the environment factor. So that's why I've shown you this thing. So up to that, after this, thank you very much. So this will be the end of the presentation that we intended to present to you, me and Deepro. So I will now end the presentation here. Thank you very much, guys, for bearing with us. Now, uh, and Thank brother, you I have a question. All like, doubts. All doubts. Uh, brother, like when we are driving a car, just like when we are starting, sometimes if we release the clutch very fast, it happens that we uh, st tend to stop the engine. Or sometimes if we don't press the brake, uh, while pressing the brake, if we don't uh, press the clutch, then the, the engine gets turned off. That's what's the reason? See, the clutch engagement and disengagement is also uh, based on that there is a uh, like clutch what it does, it connects the engine with the like gearbox. So that connection is uh, like creating a friction. Okay, now if you do, if you uh, like there are two rotating surfaces, okay, like so these two rotating surfaces are getting close to each other. Now, if you tend to do it very fast, then there's a chance that they might slip they must slip on each other and they cannot get connected very well. Mm -hmm. So you need to do it very slowly and very tenderly, like in a balanced way. So whenever you need to press the clutch, there's a balance. I'm just at the basic outline. I'm just the basic outline. I'm just at 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 the basic outline. So there is a friction. So you should not do it very casually because there might be slipping of the surface. They must press each other firmly. They should not be very, very slipping. <laughs> the connection will not be very good. If the connection between engine and gearbox gets slipped, then the car will just uh, just stop. Uh, the question I basically have, I release it, I'm slowly it, but I'm going to engine automatically off, is it an emergency system, something like that? Like Ami Joka Jet explain Kulna, what a connection part, the cano Orokum Hutchena, and a clutch a quarter cars of Chene, but engine off or part of the section. What a technical it part. Engagement but cano ever engine to off or chess at a technical it part. Kind of older products, one it could sensor at the ECU the Jayaman or it could make an easy hotel into one of the only hotel. I like the question, Chilo, the Jamon Dadabolo, the Gadi tired Jagulas, Tin Rokomeri, that are maximum permissible speed, Tin Chokilometer for the hunter Nitapare. So, what's the reason, Jay? Some cars like Jagulach Venom, as I said, I try. So what is the reason? How do they attain that speed? If the maximum speed is 300. So, question is that it is allowed for 300. When the entire discussion is slide, it is said that the maximum speed of 300 km is approx. It is deep.
ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम uh atib is asking if i keep adding engines will uh, speed still increase or uh, there is some limit cost ar economy ta ke to ekটু matha rakhte hobe mane tor pocket e jodi ekhon pai koti taka thake mane tu bana eta 5000 km par hour cholan ekta gadi mane point hocche to dorkar o nei etor oto taka deyar mane मैं मैंने चैलेंजिंग पार्ट ऑफ द वेहिकल यूनिट टू कीप इन माइंड मेनी थिंग्स देर देर आर इंटरकनेक्टेड यूनिट टू कीप इन डिटेल लाइक डिटेलिंग ऑफ स्मॉल फैक्टर्स जे ए फैक्टर टेक टू चेंज होले ए फैक्टर टा केमन इफेक्ट होचे लाइक इट्स अ वर्कलोड ऑफ मंथ एंड मेबी इवन इयर्स लाइक इंजीनियर स्पेंट मंथ एंड इयर्स देयर आर रीजंस ना कि इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स आर स्टिल डेवलपिंग देयर आर न्यू थिंग्स कमिंग अप इन इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स अच्छा रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ कर दी इज विशाल गाड़ी आवाज़ 